Augusta Harvey back in the game. this. The season's grand final has arrived with an all-consuming sense of excitement and anticipation. By the end of today, we will have a brand new name etched on the Allianz Premier 15's trophy. Gloucester Hartbury have fought tooth and nail for their spot in the big league's big day. In coach Sean Lynn's own words, they were written off at the beginning of the season. But between the talismanic Allianz Player of the Year, Mo Hunt, and an all-international pack, potent try-scoring youngsters is taking his side all the way to Queen's home. Susie Appleby's Exeter will meet fire with fire, returning for their second consecutive final and all the experience that that embodies. A mixture of world rugby superstars and local talent has guided the Chiefs through a season with only three losses, one at the hands of today's opposition. Welcome to the Allianz Premier 15's final live from Queen's Home as Gloucester Harbury welcome Exeter Chiefs women. It's a literal top of the table clash and this iconic venue in the centre of Gloucester aptly renaming itself for one of the biggest days of the domestic season. And to preview this beauty I'm delighted to be joined by two women who need no introduction but I'll give them one anyway. Cat Merchant Rachel Burford, former international England superstars and World Cup winners Guys, what a day we have in store. Kat, we have been pitch side all season long, but today we're going to have a brand new name etched in this beautiful trophy. What does that mean for the state of the league? I, I think it's massive because previously we have been very used to seeing Quinns versus Aries in the final again. And so it was great to see Exeter come into the mix uh, last year. And then this time as well to have Gloucester as well. It's just huge. We saw it when we were down in Sandy Park, the amount of support they get. The flag's already here arriving. Like Gloucester Rugby, the way that they've done things, they've built a huge fan base as well. And it's just fantastic for the game. The atmosphere is bubbling as crowds come into this incredible venue. Rachel, you've been in this position for Harlequins. You've been in that change room awaiting a finals day. What will the teams be feeling? Yeah, look, I think naturally they'll be feeling a lot of emotions right now. It's a big day for both teams. There's going to be lots of nerves and excitement, but ultimately, Players play for days like today. They want to be in the finals. They want to have the, the record-breaking crowds, and that's what it's all about. So I'm sure there's been a lot of prep this week to make sure they can control those emotions and that excitement and be ready to go come 3.30. Of course, the build-up to this happened two weeks ago. We had two spectacular semi-finals. One played right here in, at that time, named King's Home Stadium, <laughs> where Gloucester Hartbury welcomed Bristol Bears. And it was this beautiful try from Sarah Beckett that got the scores open. Let's take a little look at it now. It was just a great start, wasn't it, Kat? Oh, absolutely. The Gloucester really came um, out the blocks, and they just prove what they can do and you've got Beckett here like such a good line break and what the thing is that Gloucester do really well is that one two that back inside once they make a line break they're never on their own they're always support there and you can just see in floods of numbers that are coming through um, you know it's options as well there's other people that could have gone to but Beckett been a prolific try scorer so yeah. far this season and I think what's great about Gloucester Hartbury they're always ready they're always alive to play the game and I think that shows a lot about what the damage this team can do any moment of time they can pull the trigger get the ball to the edges and be able to convert into points like that almost in the complete opposite Susie Apley's side in the semi-finals had a really tough opening 40 so what's going to be her main focus knowing that Gloucester can, can come at the gates like that yeah, well, I think they need to have a really strong start, don't they? They need to come out the blocks nice and early. They need to be focused and ready to take on what is one of the strongest defensive teams in the league. So how they're going to be able to you know, manage and be composed to be able to break down the opposition is going to be really key. Kat, we've 
been around Gloucester Hartbury for a good part, especially in this latter season. And we have seen somewhat of a trend emerge in that there is a bit of a switch off on the 40 to 45 minute mark. And it was identified again against Bristol. But that can't happen against a team like Exeter. Well, no, and especially as Exeter, once they have time to, whether it's half time or they have time to come together, they're a smart team. They switch things around. They got it wide. They did what Gloucester normally do, get it wide, and they came at them. And that's where they beat um, Saracen. So Gloucester can't afford to do that today. And I'd say they can't even afford to turn off, um, turn off for a couple of minutes, let alone 10, because Exeter will punish them. Rach, in the midweek words of Poppy Leach, the set piece is going to be a bloodbath. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, I think you look across both packs, phenomenal amount of talent in there. The front five for both teams are going to have such an impact on today's game. But then you look at the set piece, you know, both teams, they're all thereabouts in the scrum. But for me, the line outs are going to be a key area for Exeter to go after Gloucester today. Short, saw some little, you know, opportunities there against Bristol where it didn't quite go their way. And the success that Exeter have had in their set piece this season, it'll be something that they'll target. Let's take a little look back on that extra semi-final. I mean, it was a dogfight, wasn't it, from start to finish. Susie Appleby has to be pleased, and well, she was. I remember the pictures with this final try from Ailey Sinclair because it really sealed the deal and got them here today. Yeah, it really did, and I think we've got to recognise that Exeter are a very good team at looking after the ball. Their ruck speed is the best in the league, and their ability to retain the ball, go to work, and their execution when they get into the red zone is one of the best. And I think, you know, every time that they enter there, they're able to retain the ball, keep their composure, but then still have the ability to move the ball wide whilst under pressure, and that will be a key area for them that they want to exploit. Cat, for you, what set that the performance apart from what we've seen the rest of the season? Uh, it was just that, um, you said dogged, and, and that is it. For the last few minutes, the pressure was so high on them. They weren't going through to that final. Up in those last few minutes, they'd done so well. They dealt with the, they capitalised on the yellow cards. They went for it themselves. But honestly, the pressure in that stadium was immense. It was just ridiculous. Saris really thought they had it. And so for Exeter to pull that out the bag, to not knock it on, to not give a penalty away, to actually get that try in the last two minutes was just credit to them and their mindset of how dogged they were getting into the final. Hope Rogers, we spoke to after the game, lovely, lovely, lovely uh, woman and athlete, but she was like, we were driven, we wanted it, we came out and we were hungry. Rach, let's talk about pressure because it can get the best out of you, it can get the worst out of you and players and coming into a final, being able to manage that pressure, who do you see being more capable of doing that? Yeah, well, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? Because you've obviously got Gloucester, they're at home, so you get the home advantage, but or does that add extra pressure? You know, renaming Queen's home, the fans that they've brought in, that can sometimes come onto a player as more pressure. And for me, Exeter are actually entering this arena today in a better state mindset-wise. They've obviously been to a final before, come up short, so lessons learned there. They've had a few tricky games this season where they've had to really fight for something. They've had to go away from home. They've come off really bad defeats, come back rectified that so all of those little elements will play a massive massive part in today's emotion and that mentality and being able to stick it for 80 minutes now if you look at the extra team sheet there's definitely one name that jumps off the page and that's the return of Claudia McDonald the England superstar she starts out at 11 cats what difference could she make? Uh, well, she's a real free winger. She just goes wherever. And what I love about her is when she gets the ball in her hand, she believes she can finish. doesn't matter where she is. She could be in the dead ball. And I genuinely think, given half a gap, she goes, I've got this. And that's what you need from wingers sometimes, just to get you that front foot ball. She scores some great tries. She dances down the touchline. A really exciting player to, to watch. Yeah, she really is. And I think she's really creative. And she goes looking for that work. And I think that comes back from being a nine. She can anticipate where an opportunity might be and that's why you see her so much on the ball all the time. Exeter have to have one of the most exciting backlines and certainly one of the best attacks in the league. Gloucester on the flip side, we've spoken about it all the year, have one of the best defences. So what's the separator cut? I just think these two teams are, it's going to be savage today. The defence is going to be tough. Both teams, I think Exeter as well, pride themselves uh, on their defence. Both of them like to get the, the ball wide, and they've already said about it being a battle in a set piece. So there's so many areas they can play. What they need to not get caught up in is the dogfight. They need to still play their own games. They need to get it wide. They need to attack and, and to, to exploit each other's defences. And what will be really key is the carry, the, the dominance in the carries in the game line, because both of these teams,
teams are good when they play on that momentum. Now they're coming up against two really good defensive teams, so be able to break that down. Kicking game's going to be really key. Both love to counter-attack, very successful. So any loose kicking is going to create opportunities and, and discipline. And motivations obviously pay a part. I'm not sure if you need much more motivation than that beautiful shiny trophy, but you've got to remember that both these teams have one over the other. Even earlier this month, Gloucester Hartbury were drugged, for lack of a better word. Okay, yes, a different team, but that's got to play a little bit of a part. And it's a West Country derby. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that sums it up, doesn't it? West Country derby doesn't get any more fitting, just like the London derbies. But yeah, look, I think that result will be within Exeter thinking, reminding them how they, how they can play. They obviously had a couple of upsets and then been able to put on that display. Still against a quality team, there was a lot of rotation, but Gloucester Hartbury still put in a strong side. So then that's going to give them some confidence. And on the flip side of that, Gloucester Hartbury were thinking, well, we weren't fully, full, it wasn't our full strong team. So, you know, let's work that wash. It's nothing to do with that game. It's all about today. I mean, we spoke a lot, didn't we, about emotional energy at the beginning, but I feel like it's worth letting everybody know at home that Mo Hunt has written hand personalized postcards to every single member of the Gloucester Heart Re team today, which, I mean, even me walking into the change room, I got shivers. If that doesn't motivate you for a big match, I'm not sure what will. Exactly. It's that extra motivation. There, there, and there is, like, there's a lot of things in Gloucester's uh, favour in terms of the amount of support here that it's been named to Queen's Home. But as you hit on the nail on the head there, the pressure that comes with that is huge because people are expecting them to go and win it in the performances they have. So it's uh, how they manage that today. And also, I guess, how the two directors of rugby manage that as well. To give these ties a little bit of time to head up to commentary, Nathan Middleton will be calling this one for you. I caught up with both Susie Appleby and Sean Lynn a little bit earlier on. Susie, having already won the Allianz Cup, what does the prospect of doing the double mean to this club and to you personally? Well, of course, it would be absolutely incredible, but... That was a different. That was a different story. That was ever, however many weeks, months ago. Uh, we're very much focused on the on the task in hand, which is to beat or try to beat an incredibly good Gloucester Hartbury side. Of course, it could be the icing on the cake. How has the expectation changed? Obviously, you're in that final last year against Saracens. This year, yourself and the expectation the girls put on themselves. How does it differ? Um, I think experiencing what we experienced last year. Um, at the end of the day, we were beaten by a, a very good Saracen side on the day, and they were the better side. Um, you can't take away from the emotional investment that went into the semi-final last year, um, and, and was there just a, almost happy to be there in the final. This is very, very different. I can feel it. It feels different. Again, we had a tight semi-final. We knocked out a really good side, and we've had two weeks to mentally and physically prepare for the battle that we're going into today. You know Gloucester are going to come out hard of the gates. And obviously last week, or the week before, sorry, your first 40 minutes, probably not exactly what you had in mind. What have you put in place, kind of ease the transition into the game, get on the front foot early? Uh, just, just to be ourselves, you know. We weren't quite ourselves in that first 40. Uh, we didn't maintain enough pressure on them. Uh, we put pressure back on ourselves. So we've had a good look at ourselves. Uh, we know what we can do and what we're capable of, and that's what we're going to do today. Can you put a price on having Claudia McDonald back up for selection? Yeah, Claudia's brilliant, and, uh, but I have to say, Katie has been absolutely outstanding. A 19-year-old on the wing who's been going great guns um, and will be an amazing prospect for the future and is playing really well now. So all that said, Claudia McDonald has got X Factor. You know, she's a different level. Um, she's not been in the side for a while, but she thoroughly deserves to be included today. Go well out there. Thank you. Sean. An unchanged starting 15 from the side that defeat Bristol a couple of weeks ago. What does that consistency offer you? Yeah, consistency is everything, you know, and uh, we wanted to build that momentum coming from that Bristol win. And uh, look, the defensive efforts that we put out against Bristol was uh, pretty impressive. And we know defensively we've got to be on, on sync again today. You've taken Gloucester Hartbury students to back-to-back -back Bucks titles. <laughs> Obviously, this one's a little bit different. It's the Allianz Premier 15s, but how are you leaning on that experience in terms of guiding the girls through this? Yeah, no, definitely. You know, and I, I've been in uh, semi-final knockout rugby. I know what it consists of, but the, we've got a good bunch of girls in there who got real good maturity. You know, Zoe Allcroft. Sarah Beckett, who's been here before, she played here two years ago um, in the final for Harlequins. Um, you know, and you got Mo Hunt, very special individual. So we're very excited for it. How do you harness emotion in days like today? Because 
it can either get the best out of you or the better of you. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that we said to the girls there is there's going to be mistakes, but it's the side who will fix out the quickest. Um, but the key thing is, is making sure we're all together on that pitch uh, and pull together on the highs and the lows. That pitch being Queen's home or King's home, for all intents and purposes, a home match in front of friends, family, in your patch. What does that mean to the club to be able to potentially win here? It's everything, do you know, and uh, the girls have just hit into the community and having hopefully 10,000 people here today is uh, it's special for Gloucester Harpery, but even more special for women rugby. I think it's going to be a great game today and it's, uh, it's very special and uh, to be involved in the Allianz Prem final is uh, just amazing. Good luck today. Thank you. The thoughts of Sean, Lynn and Susie Appleby there after 92 games over eight months. We're down to the final two. A very good afternoon from a sunlit, sticky and humid renamed Queen's Home where the two teams that finished top of the pile will compete to be crowned the 2023 Allianz Premier 15's champions. One thing's for certain, we'll have a new name on the trophy. Will that be Gloucester Hartbury or Exeter Chiefs? This West Country derby has so many layers, including a Premier 15's champion from outside of London for the very first time. Let's get straight to the team news, how the match day 23s are looking. And it's as you were for Gloucester Hartbury, the same starting 15 that overcame Bristol in that semi-final. Just one change to the match day 23. The Brewster Bread Roses hooker Connie Powell available again. There's been a number of standout players in Cherry and White this season. The RPA player of the year, Mo Hunt, with her 26 try assists. Ellie Ruckman's 22 tries, the control of Clakey George at 10, as well as a bunch of quality additions from the summer. The likes of Maud Muir, Sarah Beckett and Alex Matthews all reaching the final in their first year with the club. Red Roses flanker Matthews was player of the match in the last outing with just the 20. 26 tackles against the Bears. On to the Chiefs. And a huge boost for Exeter. The return of Red Roses win Claudia McDonald back from an injury that's kept her out since England clinched the Grand Slam against France at Twickenham. She has 10 tries in 11 outings for the Chiefs. There's just one other change to the 15. The Irish flanker Edel McMahon coming in for the Welsh back row and lock. Abby Fleming. Susie Appleby's side secured 16 try bonus points across the regular league season as they crossed the whitewash 145 times. USA captain Kate Zachary and open side Maisie Allen have helped themselves to 19 apiece of those, while prop Hope Rogers getting 16 included four in the meeting of these two in round 18. A huge win for the Chiefs at the El Paso Arena. Still waiting for the two teams here, of course, at the renamed Queen's Home. We're joined by Cat Merchant and Rachel Burford in commentary in just a second. But the conditions, as you can see there, a sun-baked King's Home, renamed Queen's Home for the week. Excellent work from the marketing department at the Cherry and Whites, giving a female slant to the home of Gloucester Rugby. Very much trying to make this their home, a second home away from home from the Alpass Arena to be the fourth time they've played here this season and a confirmed crowd of over 9,000 will be inside Queen so the shed as you can see there at full capacity slightly infiltrated by one or two shirts from down in Devon a number of, uh, of the extra chief supporters have made themselves right at home in the center of the shed and they'll be making some noise this afternoon Flags are flying, the noise is increasing. The growth of women's rugby across England is for everyone to see. Record attendances for the Red Roses, record attendances across the Premier 15s. And this should be a fantastic spectacle to round off what's been a very competitive, intriguing and engaging season. Some of the shots there. Queen's home looking fantastic. A real final occasion, the first and second teams in the league and very, very tight. You speak to people pre-match around the ground, obviously those in certain colours will lean certain ways, but certainly in the press box, almost too tight to call. Contrasting styles of attack and defence, throwing the ball around rugby compared to the structured game. But this is finals rugby, all about the 80 minutes this afternoon and who can put out all the things they've been speaking about over the past couple of weeks, all the things they've been working across the season for. Put it out there for 80 minutes 
and try and secure the trophy. Boatloads of buses and fans have been heading up from Devon today. There's even actually an Exeter Chiefs merchandise shop just outside. This, of course, very much a neutral venue. will have a home feel for Gloucester Hartbury. The final venues decided much earlier on in the season than Sean Lynn speaking about. It just felt right that his club, once that was announced, should be trying to reach the final. They've made it top of the pile. Incredible season for them with the 16 wins in 18. Real turnaround in form, considering they've really struggled to break into the top four. And here we go then. Here come the Chiefs, led out by Poppy Leach. Finalist last year against Saracens. Didn't really put their best foot forward. What can the Devonians put out this afternoon? Great noise around Queen's home for the women in black. And here come the side that finished first in the Alliance Premier 15s, Mo Hunt and Zoe Oldcroft, the co-captains of the Cherry and Whites, out to a cacophony of noise and the flames. Great shots from the tunnel coming out with the players. This has a real big game, big match atmosphere and build up to it. What a spectacle for the Premier 15s. Flags are flying, the sun is out. Strap yourselves in what should be a fantastic final. Referee this afternoon is Dan Jones. Television match official will be Andrew Jackson and the assistant referees of Alex Thomas and Charlie Gaither as well, guiding you through this one. Gloucester will kick off. Clakey George with the ball in her hands. Gloucester attacking left to right in the first half. In the sunshine, the crowd ramping up. Here we go then, a West Country derby like no other to decide the 2023 Alliance Premier 15s champions. We're off and running at Queen's home, where one of Gloucester Hartbury and Exeter Chiefs will be champions for the first time. Early settlers trying to get their ball in hand, of course. Chiefs, maybe not their best foot forward in the first 40 minutes. Good break there by Johnson. Now Zachary hitting a good support line. Such an incredible athlete, switching between 8 and 13. A lot of the time. Just trying to go through their stages and set piece here. We'll be hearing from World Cup winners Cat Merchant and Rachel Burford, part of your commentary team you heard from. And kick off big early hit there from Sarah Beckett lining up. The ball's come loose and first time for the Cherry and Whites to show what they've got in attack. Ball was out, so we got no advantage. Poppy Leach coming through, the ball was out, but we'll go back Sarah Beckett with an early tester. Burford said it just before the game about how important those carries are going to be today, and Exeter came straight out with a Johnson carry, lovely line break, and then in support, Zachary, who's known for her carrying ability as well. So you called it, Rach, you said it was going to be down to this, and right in the first minute, they've really put it in. Yeah, and Sarah Beckett just stepping up defensively. I mean, she was so good in the semi-final, both sides of the ball. And that's what you need. You need your big game players to step up right from the start and lay a marker. Well, as soon as you've done that as well, it just means that you're put, uh, your next time you're scanning for them, you, you maybe stand a little bit deeper because you don't want to get hit. So a lovely shot early on, really important. Great shot from Sarah Beckett on... The Irish knock Nicola Friday, first scrum of the game inside the opening couple of minutes. Chance for the front rows to line each other up. Maud Muir, Kelsey Jones and Laura Delgado, a former chief of course last year. Hope Rogers, Emily Totosi and Delika Menin. First one will be reset. And Jones just making sure he gets some pictures he wants to see at scrum time. Interesting lineup here. There's four of the Gloucester Harbury backline line up to the left hand side, not standing too deep. 
two to the right hand side. And the reset again, and it goes from Goss to Hartbury. It's a solid scrum up in the middle, but play allowed to continue. Beckett to Hunt, running across the field. Singh, now Rugman. Such a prolific sky scorer all throughout the Premier 15s. Beckett, lovely short ball back inside. Beth and Lewis hitting it. Hunt, George, Oldcroft in the middle now. First chance for the Cherry and White's attack to try and create something. Heard has passed it to the outside. Good momentum behind this Cherry and White's attack. Now the heavy runners. Quick ball again from Gloucester Hartbury. Helped on. Singh. Space that wide. Stepped in from the fullback. Beat the first challenge, not the second. Heard in support. Good early moments in attack this for the Cherry and White. Kelsey Jones. Double tackle on her. Forces are back. Bit of noise. Singing around Queenstone. Can the top of the pile side respond, that is rich. Penalty called by the referee, an early chance potentially at goal. A conversation between the co-captains Hunt and Oldcroft. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do here. Do they just want to build some pressure, build the scoreboard, or do they want to back their ability in the corner? It looks like Natasha Hunt's pointing to the corner. But what impressive play from Gloucester Hartley. The ability to move the ball to the outside channels, look after the ball. Seeing forwards coming onto the ball, it's all about that game line and that collision. Winning that gives you the momentum to play quick rucks and then try and get extra on the short defensively. There's the confidence as well in a decision like that. Looking at the whip there on the replay, Emerson's such a dangerous runner. But what makes her even more dangerous is that ability to then offload and get in behind. So, big, big decision to go for the corner here. Line out, first one of the game, up towards the front pod. Lost a heart reset. Kelsey Jones with her hands on the ball. Welsh hooker trying to orchestrate this driving ball. It's got a bit of momentum behind it. Still there for Costa Harbury. Chiefs doing everything they can to stop it. It's inching towards the line from the Cherry and White. Looking for the first point of the game. Heard coming in at the back, adding her muscle. Muir in there now. And there's a try awarded. Inside the opening five minutes, the power game from Costa Harbury. The four They take the lead in the final, Kelsey Jones coming away with the ball. We said it was going to be about pressure today and how Gloucester handled the pressure of being at Queen's home. And they have come out and absolutely nailed it. They have a penalty right in front of the post. They could have took three, they didn't. They backed their line out, they strapped back their pack. Really great score from them. And you can hear from the crowd, they're going absolutely wild. Yeah, it's been absolute quality. The driving ball for them this season was a little bit hit and miss against Bristol, so they look like they've done a bit of tidy up work around that, but the confidence, the first entry into the 22, what's, what's and let's mate? capitalise on that and come away with points. It's a great start from Cherry and White. Eighth try of the season for Kelsey Jones. Emma Singh was perfect with the boots in the semi-finals. Now regular part of the England setup. Emma Singh, couple of caps to her name. to add to 102 points so far this season. Good connection, swinging round with the white boot, but just wide, the flag stay down. So just the five point lead for Gloucester Hartbury, but they do strike first, such an early settle in terms of those final nerves. Yeah, just really important settle as well because in the semi-finals, both semi-finals we saw it, there was nerves coming out, but looks like both teams actually when they've had the ball have been really focused and clinical. Ed McGovern, the Kiwi fly half. Okay, extra going. And kicks deep inside the Harvey territory. Hunt underneath it. Goes for the spiral. One bouncing out. Well, the tactical kicking of scrum halves is such a valued part of the game and there's there's no real better in the business than the way that Mo Hunt can strike it with that right foot. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, once you've scored a try, you want to back it up and get yourself out of the pressure zone from the restart. Mo Hunt straight underneath that, just clears the line, knows that their defence, and they back it to be able to then turn the ball back over. Chiefs get on with the ball quickly. 
Into the middle is Zachary looking to find flat ball. McDonald, great hit on her from Singh. Pushes the ball straight out. It was one of those you have to commit to the play, you have to make the tackle when you throw yourself in. And Singh to a credit, an early settler into the returning McDonald. Cherry and White with the ball. Kelsey Jones, Jones just a bit wrapped up there. Hunt goes deep and the up and under from Clakey George. That's bounced back in. Referee happy to play on. Chiefs, I think, thought that was going to bounce out. Worked out nicely for the league leaders. George now with the out the back pass. Really looking the mood at the moment. Cherry and White so have started well, started confidently. Singh, been a big part of everything so far. Hunt coming in there. Good line from Olcott, just spotting half a gap in the Chiefs' defence. So he the Hartbeats' defence, one of the best in the league. The Chiefs, huge okay, points and try scorers. And trust me, these two teams like to throw it about. They like to attack with the ball. McGovern looking to try and get an early settler with the boots as well. And just as we spoke about the quality of Mo Hunt's kick, you got about to speak about the quality of Liz McGovern. Yeah, that was so pinpoint. Really, really good. They'd been under the cosh there. Gloucester had thrown everything at them. They're really starting to make a dent. So the decision from McGovern and the accuracy to put it out when she did relieves that pressure. They get a second now to reset, get their defence ready for the Gloucester line out. Another look back on that hit from Emma Singh flying into McDonald. Real feature, the Gloucester Hartbury semi-final, their defence against Bristol, the two-player tackles, the attack there not quite working, knocking the ball on, McDonald nudges it forward, first appearance since that Grand Slam win for England, just the back end of the season, but back fit and straight back into the lineup for Katie Buchanan. Hunt. Putting some space in behind, but McGovern will come onto the ball. Here's the Chiefs fly half up to the 10 meter line, loses the ball in contact, backwards is the call. Good steal on that knock on by Black. It was a good steal, then Black and knock it on. So the steal good, the knock on, it's worked out well for Gosta Harbury, put into the scrum, is there. You mentioned the defence is being so integral in this and the way that they both play so flat, the, the thing hit on Claudia McDonald, they clearly wanted to get that ball wide to her, two passes to get right to the edge of the pitch, but the speed of defence coming up is just squashing it at the minute. Mine of the two meetings this season, round one, lost to Hartbury, winning 25-17 down at Sandy Park and the Chiefs against the Gloucester Harbury side who rested some of their big names coming out 58-19 winners in round 18 one all over the season who can make it count in the final Tatiana Hurd centre partnership along with Rachel Lund goes back to the age of uh, 14 starting at Moulton and Norton in North Yorkshire A very sweet interview in the week talking about who likes Yorkshire team or childhood friends now playing in a final on the biggest stage and here is Hurd and such an important addition for the Red Roses and Gloucester Harbour has really grown into that 12 shirt after a couple of years of some frustrating injuries Hunt deeper is George goes across the ball with the spiral kick difficult one in the backfield and McDonald spilled it Deutsch back there helping her Matthews leading the charge up it goes from the Chiefs fullback and carried back into the 22. I think a bit of miscommunication there between the back three. And look where we're going. Six metres out, Gloucester Hartbury line out. Yeah, big pressure moment, isn't it? Didn't recognise that Claudia McDonald had touched the ball, according to the referee. So kicking it out on the fall just now has put Exeter back under that immense pressure. But that's what's so good about Gloucester Hartbury. They're not overplaying as soon as. They've lost that collision dominance. They need to put boot to ball, turn the pressure onto the opposition. Seeing what the driving wall can do. With Kelsey Jones, she had a tricky afternoon against the Bears in the semi-final, but all good from the first one. 
And all good from the second as well, taken by Oldcroft. She rejoins Kelsey Jones at the back. Again, just nudging forward. Slowly making its way towards the try line. Ruckman has a dart down the blind side. Use it now to call Hunt. Ruckman back to Hunt. She's over in the corner. The try is scored. We'll have a check with the TMO, but it looks as if co captain Mo Hunt has doubled the lead. Incisive breakaway down the blind side. Such clever play. We're going to have a look for a held up, though. Is the call. Let's get to the TMO. Oh, Mo Hunt then the exchange with Rugman she has the ball there in comes the tackle hits Rugman's head trying to get the ball down that looks held up that looks an arm is under it and what a brilliant recovery tackle that is from Gabby Cantona that is stunning work from the American center so smart as well because if she just goes yeah, for a right. normal hit or tackle there that's yeah, scored stick with your field decision down so, goal line drop out great work getting that arm underneath the strength as well great defensive effort from Cantona a couple of boos no, more than a couple of boos if someone is ringing around Queen's home but that very much the correct call Some celebrations for those supporting the Chiefs it's a goal line, okay what a moment from Gabby Cantona, she's top point scorer ever. But there, none of the attacking work needed, all about the defence and being able to read the tackle, read the way that Mo Hunt was going to place the ball. Not quite the cleanest of strikes from a McGovern. Not sure that was her idea. We'll go back for a, a Gloucester Harbury liner. Yeah, she was inconsistent in the, the semi-finals in the first half, but just looking back at this non-try, I, I like what they tried to do there because actually all of the Gloucester backs had moved in towards that, so it wasn't an option to go open. They were going to keep it in their forwards. It managed to spill out. They tried something a little bit different on the blind side, but defence just read it well. She knew, didn't she, Cantona? She could feel that ball on her arm, celebrating like a try. Jones this time unable to hit a mark. Chiefs stealing the ball from the line. No, it's not, no. Use it now. Robinson coming in. Leach just securing the ball at the back. To Tosi with the carry. Good meters made. Chiefs highest gain line success in the year. They use that power game. They look to try and break the line. Here is Singh in the backfield. To Harvey just trying to reset themselves. Monaghan with the carry. George Muir in the loose had a brilliant game in the semi final. The 21 year old Red Rose George looking over the top again. Clever kick trying to get the 50 22. What a kick! What a kick from Clakey George. She's been brilliant with that right boot all season and more quality from the Gloucester Harbury number 10. Yeah, really well executed kick, just so calm and composed, takes her time. You can see that Deutsch is slightly pulled out of place on the right hand side and the lovely little roller. Now it gets them right back in strike zone. Look at that celebration as well. She enjoyed that one and why not? A fly half dream. The result of that, a 50-22. If you kick it from inside your own half into the 22, you get the line out. Up goes Lewis is the front part in the scrum cap. One driving more successful, one was stopped in it tracks. What have they got this time? The Cherry and Whites moves to the left hand side. Hunt just trying to Use it. direct Two. proceedings Use from the back of this driving more. Now it's stopped. It. Heard first receiver to George, helps it on to Rugman off her wing, throws it out the tackle. That's gone forward. Costa Harbury coming through, McGovern dots it down. Just that desperation to throw it out from Rugman when she could have held on but there were numbers outside I think it's that it's that Rugman sighted that there is uh, space out there wants to go for the try but it's uh, it's less than a 50 50 you could say she's been being tackled twice she loses sight really I can see what she's trying to do because Singh is in space but really keep hold of that play the phases off it yeah, and I think just giving yourself a little bit more depth, knowing that Exeter want to bring that huge line speed and close anything down, give yourself that extra bit of depth to be able to see and execute the skill after. Work here for the Chiefs to do on their exit. Point. 
And of course finished seventh in the Chiefs. They've had a lot of success. It's cost the Harvey for a second. Thought they'd stolen the ball at the scrum. It's ricochet and they have. They have it back. It's at the feet of Beckett. It's the same scrum. Well, all that effort goes to nothing. Same scrum is the call from the referee. Same scrum, please. Okay, I'll move to the far side. I can't see. They said in the build-up it was going to be a bloodbath in the set piece, and certainly that one was there. Gloucester just getting the edge, but referee Demon, it turned, which means it gets reset. Pinballing it all over the place in that scrum. What have we got in this one? Alex Matthews is part of that recruitment drive from last summer. Gloucester Hartbury knew they, knew they needed more investment and have set about to it, and what result is had. Free kick, the result of that reset scrum. And just a bit of relief, you think, from the extra pack. And they tap it quickly. Don't fancy kicking the ball. Looking to use their power game. Ended the season strongly, of course, that late win over Saracens in the semi-finals, but big wins over Loughborough. Sorry, but Gloucester Hartbury and Watts in the closing stages. They're a team in form, they're a team scoring tries. They've yet to really get going in this opening 20. As and the sink runs onto the ball, just slightly misjudging the flight, and you say it's definitely a win from an extra point of view. From on their own five-meter line, they're up towards the halfway. Yeah, and I think McGovern there was rushed on her kick, not kicking on her own terms, but Emma Singh coming onto it. You could tell that she was going to overcook that one. Am I going to go this and this is what we've seen time and time again. Hope Rogers, such an integral player for Exeter, gets them such good okay, go forward. It's the speed of the support to her as well, straight after it. She does a great carry, presents, but it's important because Gloucester were over her so quickly. Support has to be there to blast out, and they were. Great shots from Queenstown. That's a better scrum from the Chiefs. McGovern, runners standing deep. One of those is Zachary McDonald off her wing to the far side. Sinclair then trying to step around. Of course, the winning try scorer in the semi final, Robinson. Down the blind side, penalty given. The Avena coming through, just the penalty. Some of the Chiefs fans just behind in the shed there, I think, wanting a bit more from that goal. It's interesting when you start to see Exeter building those phases, they're applying the pressure. They haven't had a lot of possession in this half. This is the first time that we're seeing them getting deep into the second half across the Hartbury. Another look at uh, Nia Avena. Coming through on Flo Robinson. Interesting season for the extra number nine. Switched between nine and ten last season, but Liv McGovern in that fly half spot. She's really cemented number nine. Been on the fringes of the England setup. Vital part of what Susie Appleby has built. Of course, we've been hearing pre match her foot in both camps, leaving Gloucester Hartbury to take charge of this Chiefs project. and what a project she's built in the three years. Two cup final wins, two finals. Can they secure a first Premier 15s title? Referee happy with the movement of this driving ball. Up towards the 22. The best attack in the league, and it can score from a number of different positions. They're looking to use the forwards now. Spinning off, looking to try and release Menin. She dives on the ball, they've secured it again. The hard carry from Friday. Robinson whips it out. Zachary, big handoff, gets through the first challenge, head down, pumping the legs. Numbers to the left here for the Chiefs. Leach, McGovern hitting the line. Good defence on their five metre. This is close as the Chiefs have been. Charging forward again, looking to use their power game. Cantona coming in, great hit on her. Still there for Exeter. Carrying into the 22, carrying hard. Cherry and White's defence now is reset. The quickest ruck speed in the league, but not quick enough there for Costa Heartbreak. Securing the turnover penalty, and the first time the defence has been really tested. And they've come away from their point of view with a big W. 
Gloucester are being really smart of either icing those breakdowns and just leaving them, leading uh, Exeter into a false sense of security that they don't have to put many numbers in. But when it counts, they go for it. They get a nice and early supporting body weight, hands on ball, penalty holding on. Yeah, Maisie Allen there. I mean, Exeter are known to have the quickest ruck speed, really good at securing it. But there, Maisie Allen just misses the shoulder of Kelsey Jones, who gets over. Now, that's huge for Gloucester Hartley, the energy and the emotion to defend their line like that and get a turnover. It's huge for them. Celebrating like a try there, the try scorer Kelsey Jones for that turnover. We're just going to have a bit of time off for a break, just past the halfway point of the first half. And you expected this was coming. It's 26, 27 degrees in Gloucester this afternoon. I can tell you pitch side, it is warm, it is sticky. It is a very tricky afternoon to play rugby in because of this heat. And the Gloucester Harvey players coming down into the shade. Chiefs taking on some water as well, but the referee keen to get on with the game. The players keen to stay as cool as possible. You can have a water break, but you have 10 seconds to drink it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting how much this element actually plays out in the game throughout the afternoon. You know, making sure players aren't going into cramp on this type of surface and this type of heat. How they manage that will be crucial. Okay, back on, please, Peter. Time back on. Costa Heartbreak with the 5 0 lead and a penalty in the shadow of their own sticks through the boot of Clakey George. Big right hoof towards the shed secure enough and they'll have the line out. I think that subs are going to have a huge impact on this game as well in a game like this where it is tight where it is boiling hot as well you're going to want fresh legs coming on we saw it last week uh, for Exeter their bench had a huge impact when they came off so interesting to see tactically how they'll play this as well from the uh, Costa Harbour media team taking a cold spray to themselves just in front of us Okay, stop. It is a very warm and sticky afternoon. We'll keep saying it. That is once. Because of the testing conditions the players are in. Mo Hunt. Yeah, it can work, Charlie. Down the line it goes. Doyd with the take. Secure from the 22-year-old fullback. Three months out early in the season, but straight into the semi-finals. What a looping ball that was. Perfection towards Claudia McDonald. She throws the ball away in frustration. A player of such quality has had such an impact in the league, and wry smile from her. She knows she should have taken that, and she would have been away. Yeah, I think those are the ones I'm going to embarrass Rachel Burke on here, but she is one of the best in the world at doing this. That flat pass onto a wing, and wingers, that's the dream to get over the top, to be able to hit on it. So she's going to be really upset with herself there because that's at least a, a really good line break, maybe even a drive in that position. Yeah, and the pressure of this game, taking your opportunities when you get them, is so critical to the end result. When you go up against an opposition that is mirroring how good you are, those come around very Crouch. far and few between. So hopefully Claudia Boys. can shake those two off now and get into the game because we know Set. that she is world class when she is on the ball. Good counter shot from the Chiefs, but Cherry and White respond. George to the ball, the no look pass to Mohan. Backwards is the call. Heard helps it on to Singh. Shimmy in a step. Out to Mia Venner and she loses the ball. Maybe uh, some of that water is stuck to the palms at heart during that drinks break. Just a couple of mistakes, quite simple passes that you expect players this quality to gobble up. I think sometimes, though, you start to think when it is a tight game, they're getting the ball like, oh, if I catch this, I'm in. And that's when you then drop it. You take your eye off it. You start thinking about the next one. Similarly, um, high balls when you see them and they look really super easy. But the wraparound play, look at the confidence as well. It wasn't a clean uh, pass initially, but they managed to regather it and they still get the whip on it. 25 minutes so far, absorbing final. Just the one try from Kelsey Jones. What's the heartbreak? Certainly more of the ball and more of the territory. Not too many try scoring moments. Mohan carry over disallowed. For a very obvious hold up. That's Rachel. Just thinking for half time, if we don't have a lot of hits, that initial Sarah Becker hit would be a good one. Carry off the line. And the hold up try. Govan in the back, little dink forward, that's clever, into space, Singh and Venner coming back. 
bit of work to do here for Emma Singh. Across the pitch initially, then she straightens. Half a break. She can get up, is not held. Clever work from the fullback. Venner. On England cap for the winger. Back in 2020, some uh, injury problems Venner since then. Inside. Inside. George standing 12 metres behind, yeah, waiting for that ball. Clean strike inside from George. Call inside. Referee called inside. They're trying to shove it back there, the Chiefs, but another great nudge from Clakey George. Yeah, clever exit there. They never look rattled. They get it out. But for me, for Exeter, McGovern decides to kick it over the top. But um, clearly the back line weren't expecting it because they were sat back so deep, which then means you don't have a good chase on it, which means that Gloucester get a free play to play out. So they've got to work a little bit um, better as a back line to know what each other are going to be doing because if you chase that, that's a very different scenario and a lot more pressure on Gloucester. To Toasty, into the line, the Canadian hooker. And it's all American, North American, sorry, front row along with Hope Rogers and Delika Menin. A real part of the chief setup. Seven North Americans in this match day 23. Here is one of them, Cantona. Off to another, Kate Zachary. Such a prolific try scorer, such a huge part of what the Chiefs do. McGovern. Just the option of McDonald outside, so she takes it into contact. Leach up to the line, looking for the power game, and Menin with the half break. Chiefs now with options to the right-hand side. Cantona carries it into the 22. Gloucester no, Harbury over no, the ball, no, but... Josh, no, your elbow's on the ground. You can't play it. Gathen Lewis's attempt dismissed by the referee. Robinson. For the runners, one of those is Friday. McGovern. Cantona. Bird coming in. The double hit on her opposite number. Robinson now scanning the play. Exeter just finding a bit of rhythm now inside the Gloucester Harbury 22. McDonald coming in as the acting number nine off her wing, keen to get involved in the play. Securing the ruck now for Robinson. Bit of noise from the Chiefs fans in Queen's home. Robinson again, there's a couple of black shirts out there. Space for Chiefs, just unable to secure the pass. Now they're held up in the tackle. There come. Slow ball now. Gloucester Harbury resets. Back foot, please, ladies. Robinson gives it to Rogers coming through. Zero check. And we're going to go straight to the TMO. That looked like a high challenge. And Sarah Beckett could be in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, just the desperation to get off the line. They can feel themselves under pressure. OK, so Jacko, yeah, clear head contact by eight. I just want to check the level of sanction, please. We are with the TMO. Referee is Dan Jones will walk into the corner. Real speed first. Head on head from Sarah Beckett. And the shoulder has gone high. She could be in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, they want to determine whether or not it's shoulder first, then the impact rises to her head. OK, so, Jacko, just confirm we have clear head contact? Y yes, we do, yeah. Clear quite head contact. The players are both coming down, and there's also other tacklers involved. So at the moment, I'm going for a high level of danger mitigated down to a yellow card on the basis that there's a lot going on of dynamics, and a lot of the force also goes through the chest. So the, the the second player it comes in significantly afterwards. So it is a one is a one on one hit to start off with, mate. Okay, one on one. Then, so I want to see it again, and I want to see if the majority of the force either goes to the chest or to the head, will determine whether it's a red card or a yellow card. Yeah, no worries. We'll get that we'll get that first angle for you again. Yeah. I think I don't think the drop is significant. OK, so both players are bent to the hips as well, so it's fairly low. So I'm going to go yellow card on that, because the majority of the force is through the chest, and both players are coming down, which will bring it down from that red card. Anything to add, Jacko? OK, yeah. yeah. Right. 
Okay, yellow card. Possibly quite lucky with Andrew that Andrew Jackson, the television match official, yellow cards. The punishment for Sarah Beckett. Dan Jones saw enough of a, a bend in that collision. Fully committed Sarah Beckett into Hope Rogers, but one right on the edge that call. Yeah, I think possibly TMO was angling to potentially look at it again, thinking possibly that it could have been a red, but referee's happy he's seen he's enough of a mitigating factor to bring it down to a yellow, but I think she's quite lucky there. Yeah, it'll be important how Gloucester Hartby managed the next 10 minutes within this, but, it, but in the same breath, Gloucester Exeter need to capitalise on this extra player advantage. And now we've seen them be walking their driving malls up the pitch, so can they do it from seven metres out? Five metre line out for Exeter Chiefs. To Tosi, to the middle pod. Johnson takes the ball. To the left-hand side it goes. Great momentum behind this driving mall as Chiefs look to level up the final. Foster Hartbury throwing bodies in. Can they go again to the left-hand side? Inches away. Chiefs cross in the final. Too much power for Costa Hartbury. And it is Emily Totosi going over for her fourth try of the season. Started the line out, finished the line out. We're all square at Queen's home. Oh, they had to capitalise on that yellow and they did just that. A really solid set piece. You could see the impact of the players from the outside. The backs running in to hit it, have their impact on it as well. But Costa don't compete in the air. So they're staying down, they want to defend, but Exeter marching on and the way they add those extra players into it to get their weight behind it. Yeah, and you just see them crab to the left slightly, which just pulls Gloucester Hartbury out of place. Then they get the drive going forward and then all the momentum is with them. Yeah, all good Relief Thanks. for the Chiefs. They're on the board, they've not spent too much time in the 22. And levelling things up here is... Liv McGovern, the Premier 15's top point scorer in her first season in England, looking to nudge Exeter ahead. Posting in from Liv McGovern. Exeter do edge themselves ahead. Praying to the gods there is Susan Appleby, just giving you an insight of how tense and tight this final is. As Emily Totosi goes off and celebrates a try. Great work from the Chiefs pack. Put them ahead in the final. Yeah, the Susie coach cam is fantastic to watch because she really goes through all the emotions. But such an important kick, that one, to get. And the fact it bounced off the post and still managed to go over. I don't even know the physics of that and how that happened. Um, but it looked to bounce this way, but they're ahead. George goes deep. Oh, it's touched by Friday. And Cody McDonald then taps it in. Wow. You say, keep your positives going and try and back it up but a, a couple of moments there from the cheese where heads just didn't seem to know what they were doing yeah and i think you know it's a shame that exeter didn't recognize you know as you're restarting where they likely to go probably deep left or deep right so maybe sitting back recognizing that lost the heart rate under pressure and susie appleby's face right now will be full of frustration to just get ahead start turning that momentum and now they've just put themselves under all sorts of pressure 14 players for Gloucester Hartbury, Sarah Beckett in the bin. Gross. So Tatiana Hurd is a auxiliary Blinds. blindside flanker. Set. Alex Matthews in at eight. Solid enough from the new Gloucester Hartbury scrum and Matthews from the base. Great work from the Red Roses flanker. Power from the base of the scrum. What can the 14 of Gloucester Hartbury do here? Old Croft carrying it forward. Hunt keeping it tight with their forwards. They back their power game. The Cherry and White. Space for George looping over the top. There is Venice trying to spin out the tackle. Doige did just enough there. Well done from the extra fullback. Flat now from the runners. Can Mohunt add to a 26 try assists so far this season? Here's Muir, the former. Was front row. Heard as first receiver, stepping back inside. Hunt again, this is good quick ball from Gloucester Hartbury. Getting in behind the Chiefs defence there. An advantage on the play as well. Looking, scanning his hunt. 
Goes down this blind side. Goes again the same way. Foster Hartbury for the corner, diving over. And the 14 players go over. It is Rachel Lund. The winning try score in the semi. Crosses for the cherry and white. Queen's home erupts to Lund's try. A second for Gloucester Hartbury. They're all on the back of Exeter, putting themselves under pressure. A simple error gives Gloucester Hartbury the opportunity to be in the 22. Just really good match up there. Recognises she's against the prop. Probably can just get on the outside just enough to stretch her. Does a little pump there, which puts two thoughts into Claudia McDonald's mind as she gets over in the corner. And it's the flat pass as well to get it to her in the first place. It just means it's so easy to kind of hit on and then be able to scan. And it's like you said, that little pump to get rid of the defender and go round. But that's a good, strong finish as well. She's leg driving, dragging the defender with her. She's had a brilliant season. 16th try in a campaign for Rachel Lund. And I mentioned it in the build-up to that. That'll be a 27th try assist for Mo Hunt. Singh lining up her second from this right touch line. Clean as a whistle strike, but it just goes to the left. We're right behind that in our commentary position. She's got the distance from the touch line, just inches away from the accuracy there, but. Gloucester Harbury regained the lead, 10 points to 7 in the Premier 15's final. And whenever the finals are always going to come down to how you deal with pressure. Again, we mentioned it, Exeter put themselves under pressure. They scored, then a silly error, and then off the back of that, under immense pressure. And letting Gloucester score with 14 is really going to damage their, their confidence. Restarts just needs to be secured by Gloucester Harbury here. And to Monaghan. Former Wasp player who's come to the West Country. Irish Lock has really formed a formidable engine room with Zoe Oldcroft in recent weeks. Kind bounce from a Costa Harbury point of view to McGovern. She strikes it low, a real dribbler there. And she did mean that. I'm not sure she made the cleanest connection. It's a very good tactical kick. Tactical, yes, and it does get them into the lost the Hartbury's half but it now allows lost the Hartbury to have the ball slow the ball down run that clock down we've seen how dangerous extra can be when they keep hold of the ball but they're kicking away so much possession Absolutely agree with that. I think they had numbers enough out wide to attack that. Because remember, Gloucester are a player down, so why not be running them? Don't give them the ball. Actually, Exeter need to keep hold of it. Keep making Gloucester defend because it's knackering defending with 14. Uh, Gloucester Hartbury not quite on the money in terms of what was happening at the line out, but they have secured their own throw. Okay, two and use it, Gloucester. Not really going anywhere. Well, an interesting 30 seconds out for Gosta Harvey. The line out not really functioning. They secured it despite not really what was going on and then didn't really seem to have too much of an idea after that. Yeah, I think it's the Lika Menin managed to get in there and latch on to, to the receiver. Exeter just need to play smart, especially for the duration of this yellow. Play smart, play tactically, because we know that they can uh, make good line breaks. We know what they can do with their energy, but actually I think it's up, it's up here. It's, it's in the brain. It's going to be tactics is what's going to capitalise on this. Just a break in play here. Maud Muir receiving a bit of attention on the floor. Remind you that... Uh, Main title sponsor of the league is donating a thousand pounds to Mine Charity for every try scored. So we're up to three grand already, and I'm uh, sure we'd like to see plenty more donated uh, to that charity because that will mean plenty more tries. We are still down on the floor. There's Catherine okay. Buggy and Cecilia Tuipilotu. Is the replacement props, Sarah Beckett, just going through on a exercise bike down pitch side, just a minute left on her 10-minute simbin.
Yeah, he just saw some messages come on for Exeter as well. Wonder if that was, you know, let's play high tempo, let's tire the opposition out, because that will come alive in the second half. Still with the player advantage, the Chiefs. Good drive from the scrum. Johnson, dart down the blind side from the American, goes on an arcing run. Have a hear what the referee called here. Yeah, I think he was holding in on the break, on the blind side. Didn't allow the flanker. Copy, your flanker's pulled by the player, creating a gap. And the penalty against you here. Just so unnecessary. Didn't need it. If you're going to try and be right on the line of the laws, you've got to be subtle about it. Also, they've got the player advantage as well, so they don't need to be playing on the edge. They don't need to do anything dangerous. Actually, Johnson's a fantastic runner. She could probably make that line break anyway by doing it cleanly. So, again, tactically, Exeter under pressure. Do some crazy decisions. They've done it throughout the season at times as well. She did seem to have a lot of space there, Johnson. And uh, that was why, as we have another look, Alex Matthews trying to wriggle away in the top of your screen. You can see her trying to hit the arm off in frustration. Good call from the assistant referee on that far side. Yeah, the flankers are all about trying to get what you can, get a little, you know, you play to the edge, but not when you're in, in this position, it just doesn't make sense. Monaghan cleanly taken. Across the heartbreak. What have they got off this set piece? Mia Venna. Ball there for Hunt. What a season she's had. The RPA Player of the Year for the league. Such heartbreak at the start of it as big hit there on Delgado. Both her and Sarah Beckett, of course. Not part of the Red Roses squad in New Zealand at the World Cup, but they've both had such impressive seasons at club. And both part of the Red Roses Grand Slam effort later on. A difficult kick for McGovern, does well to just check her feet and stay in. No distance really though on the kick. As well, it's been one try apiece during the loss of Sarah Beckett. She's back on the field. The last couple of minutes of this half, she returns to the back row. Clay kick of jaw, she just gives us a master class in tactical kicking, looks up, sees that Rudman is really well defended, so just threads it through. And here now McGovern under all sorts of pressure, not a great angle to be able to exit out of. Yeah, she did really well in the first place to get that absolute fingertips and making sure she didn't touch the touchline as well. We've seen Beth and Lewis lobbed up in that front pod and she's there again securing the ball. Sarah Beckett immediately straight into the driving mall, which secures an advantage. What have Gosta Hartbury got here? Mo Hunt with the chip, looking for Tatiana Hurd coming through. Clever play with the outside of the boot, knowing the penalty coming. Now get the ball back, and I think considering everything we've seen so far, we won't be going for sticks, we'll be looking down the line. Yeah, and why wouldn't you? It's worked really well, whether or not they've managed to get over through them all or the options that they've got off of it as well. You can just feel the momentum's growing back towards Gloucester Heartbreak. Clakey George uses the outside of that right boot. Gloucester Heartbreak, five and a half metres away from the Exeter Chiefs try line. One from Jones so far, one from Rachel Lund. 10-7 they lead. And a minute to go until half time. Secure the ball. Lewis again. Beckett round the back. Looking for Matthews on the wraparound. Good Chiefs defence down that blind side. Short ball looking for Muir. Power runner. Chiefs tries to spin. Again, extra up to the challenge. Hunt keeps it short. Those power runners off first base ball. Hunt again in there quickly. Demanding the ball. Beckett with a head down. She goes over. Sarah Beckett for the try. Right on the choke of half time. Gloucester Hartbury taking charge of the Premier 15's final. And that's the way to make up for a yellow card. Come back on for your team. A fantastically hard carry and get the try as well. And this is why Gloucester are so dangerous. You think they're going to go over uh, from the line out, but they've got so much more to their game. They can play it off, they can carry, they can dart down the blind side. They are just dangerous in all areas of the pitch. 
Yeah, exactly. It's having options, isn't it? So you're always second guessing the defensive effort, some of the physicality and the shots going in. But in the end, Sarah Beckett just gets underneath the defenders and managed yeah, to dot down. Yeah, yeah. yeah all good. Singh then looking for her first successful kick of the afternoon. Easier shots at goal so far. Drawing that line between the ball and the posts. Nudged over from Singh, despite the pressure from McDonald. It will be a 10-point lead going into half-time for Gloucester Hartbury. They're in their home venue, the renamed Queen's home. And Sarah Beckett's try, right on the stroke of the 40, has put them in charge of the 2023 Allianz Premier 15s final. So the majority inside this venue will be pleased of what they've seen from those in cherry and white. Chiefs have very much played their part. They will go into the break. 15-7 down. Kelsey Jones, Rachel Lund and Sarah Beckett going over for Gloucester Hartbury. Emily Totosi off the back of a driving mall for extra Chiefs. And their confirmation of the score 17 7 at the break across the heartbreak in the driving seat as we head into the second 40. let's have a look at some of the stats across that first half you can see there the possession very close in the end Gloucester heartbreak very on top when it's coming to the opening stages where they've carried more and they've made a few more meters as well the penalty count both will be pleased with this very low from both sides and the territory 50 50 as close as you like what an entertaining first 40 that was and So we'll get the half-time analysis. Rachel Burford and Kat Merchant are heading pit side with Lauren Smith. We'll be speaking to players from both camps as well. But let's get a look back at the magazine show all about the Premier 15s. All in. Here's a preview and a snippet. You can watch the full show on England Rugby's YouTube. But here, just a little snippet for you of All In. Try time, Gloucester. They are back in the game. Worcester on the board. Queens have a third try. What a start from Bristol. Fabulous rugby from Exeter. In the corner for DMP. It's lightning with the ball. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant from Saracen. Hello and a very warm welcome to All In. My name is Ashley Wilmot and it is a pleasure to be here with you today. Now, no doubt, it has definitely been the most competitive Allianz Premier 15s season we've had and it's official, we're going to have a new name on the trophy. Is it going to be Gloucester Hartbury or is it going to be Exeter? Cheese, well only time will tell and I'm delighted to be joined today by two of the most loved and most respected players, England and Loughborough Lightning's Emily Scarrett and former England and London Irishers. Totsy Ojo. Hi guys, how are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Yeah, good very good. good, very good. Nice to be back and nice to have you guys here as well. I mean, I, I can say we've upgraded, can't I? <laughs> yes. <Don't tell> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> we won't like that. <laughs> it's nice to have one of the originals in the chair today. So Totsy, you can show us, show us the ropes. Now, as I just mentioned, we've had a fantastic season so far. So what is your top line? What's your headline? I think for me, it's like a season of the changing of the guard. We're so used to seeing Harlequins, Saracens, on that trophy or in that final and this year it's, it's not going to be the case. Quinns didn't even make the top four, Saracens have obviously just lost in the semi-final so really excited to see a new name on that trophy. 
And just a bit of all in for you there, Emily Scarrett and Topsy Ojo with Ashley Wilmot. A rounder for the season, a look ahead to the final, and lots of great Premier 15s features as well. Let's get a bit of first half analysis and head pitch side, where Rachel Burford and Catch Merchant is joined by Lauren Smith and a special guest. Thanks, Nathan. Yes, Shuan Lily Crap from Gloucester Harbury also joins us. What well, really sparked into action in that final 10 minutes, 17-7 at half time. I mean, Shuan, if you've got a top line, like kind of an overview of that first half, what stands out? Oh, I don't know, it's been an exciting first half, hasn't it? But I think, you know, Cleeky George for me, the kicking game, and Emma Singh, putting Gloucester Harper in the right places to be able to play. And then big people standing up to big moments in the game and taking opportunities, big shots, big ball carries, and it's been an exciting first half. Rachel, big games require big game players. And despite the yellow card, Sarah Beckett is really fulfilling that role, starting with that beautiful, very hard hit. Yeah, exactly. It's all about coming out the blocks and big players in big games. You really need them to step up and lead from the front. And she did exactly this. They were under pressure, just come off a bit of a line break. But here just squares up Friday so well. Textbook tackle on this one. Gets nice and low and chop, but that steps their stall out. It makes everybody around them galvanise and be ready to play it. And let's go and take it to them. I mean, big moments like that, it just does so much for the momentum of the game. And Kat, it led beautifully on to Gloucester feeling, I guess, that they had the confidence to go for the corner rather than take points to that Kelsey Jones try. Yeah, I think it's that because Exeter were building. They're trying to play flat. They're trying to break that line. And when you've got defence like that that really shuts them down, you then... Um, they, it, it squashes Exeter, so them being able to have the line out, have the confidence to go for it on the penalty, and a lovely driven line out try. Speaking of big players, obviously Kelsey Jones. I mean, she's having the season of her career, isn't she, Shuan? But after a bit of criticism around the line out last, well, two weeks ago, yeah, it's shoring up quite nicely. Yeah, definitely. A line out execution has been superb today, but obviously as well, Kelsey's a massive defensive player, made a couple of big shots in the middle of the field, but also turned over at crucial times. But under pressure on games like today, Cup Final Rugby, People like hookers have got to nail their line out. And to be fair to Kelsey, she's absolutely done that today. She really has. Well, five minutes it was for a long period of time, but we thought that Mo Hunt had done enough. Breaking away from the scrum, it was a lovely little move, but it didn't quite work out, Rachel. No, it didn't. And you've got to credit the desperation from Exeter, Gabby Katona, getting across, which you would have thought for all money Mo Hunt was going to be in here. But just the smart and awareness, the play to the blind side first and foremost, we just saw them do that just before the end of the second half. So varying up their options, but the desperation to get across and to be really smart technically around how she's tackling, if you chop tackle, Mo's over. So you've got to be able to wrap that ball up. She's still stays in the fight as Mo's going down and gets that rip. I mean, these are moments in the games that will really matter throughout the game. It gives confidence, it lifts the energy, so it's absolutely superb to see. Cat, defensively, the work from Exeter there to keep that out, what would that have done for their, their kind of momentum going into the latter half of that first half? Yeah, huge confidence boost, it's smart play, it's strong play as well, holding up, because when you're close to scoring and you get turned over or you get denied, it can get into your head and you can then um, not have the confidence to go for it. Maybe next time they go for points, for example. So those moments, really, really key. They're just as important as scoring a try, actually stopping the team from doing it. When we look for stories like within halves, I mean, it's all about Sarah Beckett because she's phenomenal out on the pitch and everything she does. But that sometimes leads her into a little bit of trouble, she has. Yeah, she wears her heart on her sleeve, doesn't she? She's an outstanding player in person, but she's super committed, she's super physical, and uh, gets a bit excited, jumps out the line, makes outstanding sh sh uh, shots, but you live on the edge somewhat with that, with that dangerous uh, side of your game. So, yellow card, look, she holds her hands up, and uh, she apologises as well to hope that she goes off, you know? She didn't deliberately do that. Here, you're defending your try line, and you do absolutely anything to stop them going over. So, yeah, uh, a yellow card, but uh, she's back on now and come back on with the vengeance, didn't she? She really have. I mean, Rach, before the match, we talked about that emotional energy, and you can see it playing out on the field. Yeah, look, Sarah Beckett is ultra competitive. She, like Shuan said, wears her heart on her absolute sleeve and will want to do everything. So she would have been sitting on that bike, keeping warm on the sideline, thinking exactly how she's going to make an impact when she comes back on. And she did exactly that as soon as she got onto the pitch, back on the ball and getting a, a nice tidy five points for them what we did this see though was Exeter bouncing back immediately taking advantage of having a woman down a beautiful score from Emily to totes cap 
Yeah, I think really good. Um, like keeping that composure and that calm because they had to score. They had to make sure they capitalised on the yellow card. So a lot of pressure on them. They haven't had much ball and definitely not in the uh, in the attacking place where they have it there. The speed at which it gets moving as well. They're really utilising. Backs come into it as well. They crab across to the left and then dart across right at the right time to make sure they get that try. Now, it got better for Gloucester from there, didn't it? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It did get better, you know, and you know, we're a yellow card down to this point. And what I will say is, battle of the lineouts, battle of the driving mall has been superb. And Gloucester, we're renowned for going to our driving mall. Exeter have held us out there, and we're a player down here, Gloucester, tried to hold them out, but Exeter find that edge and get over. And, uh, you know, they've been pressing for some time in, in Gloucester's half until, until that point. But then we see uh, Becky come back on, don't we, later on and score the try. In terms of momentum flows of the game, for Gloucester to have such a big final 10 minutes, how imperative was that? Yeah, it's really important. You always want to finish the second half on your terms with the momentum with you. And, and they did exactly that. And you could feel, you know, for the first 20 minutes, they were up, Exeter were under so much pressure, hardly had any possession. Two or three possessions that Exeter get, they find themselves in really good positions to attack from, start to shift that momentum. And then that yellow card actually galvanised Gloucester Heartbreak. They kicked long on the restart, which then straight away put Exeter under pressure. And those moments are really, really important. When you're a player down and actually you're the team coming out top the amount of energy that that gives you as a team and confidence just will hopefully lead into the second half for them cap and then it came down to sarah beckett <laughs> yeah I mean, she's had quite a first half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dramatic first half, you'd say. But I think um, she wanted to come on, come back on, prove her impact. And uh, what Gloucester do so well is, as you mentioned, Exeter have been defending really well in the line out. So it's forcing Gloucester to find other alternatives. So they go to the lines, then they play it open. Some lovely carries. Nord does so well. Really strong carrier uh, initially as well. They recycle the ball, manage to move it out. And then Beckett, just her strength and the the way she hits the line just with such pace as well was a great finish. Yeah, and she's got two players defending her, so ultimately they should have kept her out, but it just shows how strong and powerful Sarah Beckett is when she comes at the line. She is super strong and she's super powerful. She's really hard to stop, actually. Once she's got that momentum, she's a really tough player to stop while she's on the ball. I do not doubt that for a second. I wouldn't be on the opposite side to her. Right, I'm going to let you get to your team, Shuan, because I have another very special guest waiting in the wings in... Exeter Chiefs fullback Laurie Kramer, who is dashing in. Laurie, what's your main takeaway from that first half, Exeter? Oh, I mean, for Exeter, I mean, we've had a lot of opportunities that we knew that we'd get. I think just a few times our execution was maybe a little bit off, but I mean, we got we got a bit of his hustle through the middle and a bit of on the end. So I mean, on the edges, so I mean, that's exactly what you expect from us. But I think just a bit of execution. Um, excited for the second half because you can't kind of say out. I mean, the, the last few weeks have been a really good example of um, Exeter coming back in the second half. And I mean, I'm sure Susie's giving a really cool, calm and collected uh, speech right now to the girls. And um, I mean, we've got the talent and we've got the leadership to, to get us over the line. So I reckon I'm excited for this second half. What do you think is going to be said in that changing room? Because it's not like it's been it's been awful or anything. Yeah. There's, there's still a whole 40 minutes still to play. Yeah, I think we've, we've had a lot of really successful go for ball when we're hitting those short balls and we're hitting our big ball carriers. So honestly, oh, here we are. Sorry. Hey, mum. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm distracted. Um, good question. Oh, what's being said? Honestly, I think just making sure that, I guess, avoiding our 22 because every time that we get down there, Gloucester seems to be able to execute um, as what we expected from them. You know, they're a class side, but um, I guess just... No, uh, organising the backfield and making sure that our, the, we can get out effectively, I guess. I think you're my favourite Austrian, Austrian yes! ever put on television. <laughs> I'll take back, it, I'll take it. Yeah, Rich, sorry. let's talk about the back three, because there does seem to be a little bit of miscommunication happening out there. Yeah, a little bit. It looks like George has been a, li a little bit left on her own in the middle and getting pulled out slightly. But you're going up against a great tactical kicker with Flaky George, just being able to pick out exactly where the fullback is and then slicing it through. But I think what, if the wingers can just connect a little bit more, we know how good Claudia McDonald is. Had a bit of time out, maybe not, hasn't had that much time together to be able to connect. And, you know, those cues is loud in here as well. That's another aspect that some of these players would have come under this sort of tension. I mean, Kat, we talked about big game players and big moments. Liv McGovern is marshalling as best she can. She's taking the pressure off and she's getting them from football. How pivotal could she prove in the second half? 
Yeah, I think it is that, and um, we've referenced it a couple of times about getting deeper so they can take the pressure off themselves a little bit more, especially as Gloucester are flying up in that defence because really they have to play their own game. They came out in the semi-final at half-time and they completely changed how they play, so hopefully from an Exeter point of view, they do just that again. Laurie, teams are running out. You get that buzz, don't you? Oh, the Chiefs! <laughs> you get that buzz. I mean, just watching on, what do you want to see from your team in the second half? Oh, bloody hell. Um, seriously, I, I just think we got a, we got an excellent bench, as we've just seen. And I mean, you can't count us out. We're strong from, from number one to number 23, you know. So, excellent shoes. We're just going to take our opportunities when they come, and we've got to execute them and bring a bit of energy to the second half. And I reckon we've got it in the tank. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Yours as well, ladies. You better head on back up to commentary. Nathan Middleton for the second half. Thanks very much, Lauren. Great to get the thoughts of Laurie Kramer and Shuan Lily Crap there. Interviews from uh, both camps. Shuan definitely the happier of the two, you'd have to say. But right in the heart of the action, teams running out just behind them. And one or two of the Chiefs running out in front of us as well. But too busy focusing on the game. Liv McGovern, a couple of bounces and getting us going in this second half. Looking deep towards Clakey George. For a second, it like she might get in the way of Mo Hunt. Puts her head down and absolutely hammers one towards the halfway line. Clakey George is kicking. It's such a feature, this Gloucester Hartbury side in terms of what they do, how they play. And another great strike there to get her team towards the halfway line. Right in front of the shed. I imagine uh, Emily Totosi getting one or two comments as she throws it in and potentially putting her off there as Gloucester Harbury in possession of the ball and immediately getting themselves a penalty. Mohan, the tap and go. Off she goes running. Now Gloucester Harbury number nine throws the ball out. Chiefs pick it up. Beth and Lewis coming round. She's looked to secure the ball, the Welsh flanker, and she has done. The ball changing possession. Now Rubman with her head down over the 22. Hunt. Oldcroft. George to Hurd. What can the Gloucester Hartby backs do here in a bit of space? Looking to try and take it on is the power game of Lund. High tackle coming in. This is a brilliant start to the second 40 from Gloucester Hartbury. Lewis with the carry. Hunt, Monaghan, two to bring the second row down. Quick and out for Hunt, here is Muir, bouncing, charging, bustling away through. Hunt again, George goes for the kick across, Rugman chasing it, Rugman looks for the bounce, it's tapped over. Gloucester Hartbury get a hand in, will go back for the penalty advantage, and just as Rachel Burford and Cat Merchant make it up. You missed uh, quite a lot of rugby there, making your way back to the press box. We were watching as we were running up the stairs, like keeping an eye back. But Gloucester just starting immediately, the way that they move it. I like when they have advantage, they don't just kick it straight away. They do still look to play. They're playing smart rugby. And I think what's probably been said at half time is keep the tempo nice and high. We've got Exeter on the ropes at the moment. Let's not let off. You see there, Mo Hunt with the quick tap just puts Exeter on the back foot, applying that pressure. Uh, just with the television match official at the moment for a high tackle, just checking this. Well, this is Clakey George's kick. Um, I thought it was an earlier one down this near side as McDonald gets a hands to it. Just, uh, once another check of that, Dan Jones. McDonald and Rugman going in. McDonald gets a hand to it. What a turn of events here. Gloucester Hartbury walking back to the halfway line. Yeah, 11. Yeah, okay, lovely. So, going in the corner, a player's in the proper position to score, trying to slap it out. So, it's going to be, you know, you slap it out, you slap it out. 
What a moment in the game. Confusion all over the face of Claudia McDonnell, but the deliberate tap out means a yellow card and seven points to Gloucester Heartbreak. What an incredible start to the second half. Yeah, not an incredible start for Exeter. Under pressure, seven points gifted to Gloucester Heartbreak. But yeah, Claudia McDonald. Yeah, we've got two players competing for the ball in the air. What you can't do is slap the ball out into the touch. See there, she, I think in her mind she's trying to bat it away from the defender, but if it goes out, that's the risk that you run. Yeah, that, and that's the difference. I think she's thinking of when you're in play, you're on the pitch, you can tap it obviously back if, if um, you get a hand to it, but you cannot tap it out of pitch. So because it's gone out the back there, she's still looking obviously confused and, and, and gutted there. Not knowing the laws of the game there, Claudia McDonald thought she was in the right, but penalty try conceded and a long way back for the Chiefs now. 24 points to seven, they trail. They staged a really impressive comeback as George's kick is tapped from a Chiefs hand. Impressive comeback in the second half against Saracens in the semi-final. They're going to need something as equally good, if not better now. Down to 14 players, Susie Appleby's side. And trailing by 17 points. This is a well-drilled team, though. Already secured a cup win this year. Won 15 of their 18 games. They know how to win matches. They know how to grind out Ws. They've got to do it here in the sunshine at Queensland. Doidge into the line. One of a number of youthful players, the likes of Flo Robinson as well, coming in. Unfortunately, Nancy McGilvery out with an injury as well. But things building at Sandy Park. Second Premier 15's final in a row as Hunt with the kick. Bounce just launches up. What a step that is from Sinclair. Clever footwork still going. The diminutive Scottish winger. Now Menin through a tackle, big handoff as well. Still some fight in these 14 players and they're coming forward, they're going through their structures, they're going through their phases. And Robinson with the dummy, now the step. Certainly got Gloucester Hartbury on the back foot at the moment, McGovern helping it out of contact. So Tosi the try scorer there. Doidge in his first receiver. Robinson Friday places it down McGovern with a show spots half a gap the Kiwi never been capped by the Black Ferns been part of one of their development sides Poppy Leach wants the advantage nowhere near the mark to tap and go quickly she'll just take a breather but that was a, a good 90 seconds or so for the Chiefs yeah, it was really good. Well, just being patient with the ball, building the phases, waiting for those opportunities to appear in front of them. Just recognising disconnects slightly around the ruck. You saw Flo Robertson have a little dart and then McGovern get in an opportunity to get through. All started for the counter-attack as well. Sinclair doing so well to field that ball. A really good step as well and chase. And from that, for the first time here, here we can see the angle of it. That's not an easy one to take that footwork there to dummy uh, Rugman on the right and then go across. It's so hard to do in, in that instant. So really great from Sinclair. Lovely to see. Gabby Cantona has got the Chiefs within striking distance. They're down one back, they've got a full complement of forwards for Tatosi to aim for. She's found her mark. One try already for the Canadian this afternoon. In comes the supporting cast for the Chiefs. Slow and steady, but there is some progress. First to the left and now forward they go. Costa Harbury doing everything they can, throwing bodies in. Sarah Beckett coming through and advantages the call. Flo Robinson keen to get on with proceeding. She gives it to Rachel Johnson for the line. Short again, Rogers now has she powered through. Held up is the call immediately. 
Looks so, so close there to a 17th of the season, the American, but immediate call from the referee. Yeah, you almost wish for Exeter that they'd taken a little bit more time on that one there because actually we know how strong their carriers are. And if they'd have just taken their time, they could take three, four, five, six phases to get over it. And if you time it wrong and get held up, all that momentum's just gone against you. Yeah, and I think when you go for a quick tap, you want to do it when the opposition's on the back foot. When everybody was back on the try line, Tatiana Heard nicely lined up the first carry, which gave everybody else the chance to reset just pressure moments like that being clear and composed of your decisions is what's letting next to them it's again it's the tactics it's the tactics of when they're going for something or when not you're absolutely right crypt tats can be great to catch another team off guard but when they're set and waiting for you then set piece is not what um, that quick tap is not what you're wanting to do the agony etched all across susie appleby's face there dismay and her side goes so so close Clakey George underneath the ball and she'll be the one to get us going again Ellie Rugman I think just receiving some treatment on her left leg yeah, referee happy to continue play those Costa fans enjoying what they've seen so far at Queen's home 17 point lead Approaching half an hour to go. Doidge with the take. McGovern looking to try and get her team going again. No, I'm lost. You had a second go. Friday. Really settled into life. In Devon. One or two unhappy with that tackle. We will be checked. Another big hit coming in as Beckett lines one up. Uh, hit to the head means play will be stopped. And there's a lot of blood there as well. Rachel Lund, I think, is the one over there, and uh, that requires immediate treatment. Yeah, bring more time, please. Yeah, you wonder, she's obviously made head contact somewhere. Have another look at this, and she's just gone high, and her head has obviously risen up under the chin of Rachel Lund there, just getting herself in a bad tackle position. It's head on head as well. Yeah, and the fact is she's entered that tackle completely upright, doesn't look to adjust her body height. Could she be in trouble here herself? Because it's... A poor tackle position from Rachel Lund, and it is direct contact head on head. Well, the referee straight away asked for TMO to check it. You can see that it's an upright tackle. Could be a double whammy here for try scorer Rachel Lund because, in getting herself in a, a poor tackle position, she's hit herself under the chin. She's got blood pouring, and now we're going to need to, a check with the TMO. We're seeing the replays. The referee hasn't seen it yet. As you can hear, Dan Jones yet to see anything on the screen. We just need to plug in a few wires. Yeah, it'll all be about the level of danger for the referees and the TMO now. Referee finally having a look at this, first in full speed, and then we'll slow it down. Okay, so what I'm seeing is there is clear head contact and there is foul play. Yep. yep. Um, but it's a soak up tackle, so it's not a high degree of danger for me. So I'm doing yellow card, 13 red. So there's a soak of tackle, yep. there is head contact, she's yep, always high. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be 13, yellow card, but they've obviously been replaced, so it's the player that's come on into the Yeah, I think that's a fair call. You can see Rachel Lund is absorbing the tackle. It's not aggressive, it's not going into the player's head. She's absorbing it, which they call a passive. So the level of degree of danger is lower, therefore mitigated down to a yellow card. Sophie Bridges seeing the funny side there of coming on, not being part of a minute, on for Rachel Lund and having to be taken off as Chief's kick doesn't reach touch, but it did reach Natasha Hunt who knocks it on. 
and now they'll have a scrum down to 14 players again and Exeter well you talk about big moments in finals this you'd say in terms of attacking striking position a very very good one yeah with the scoreline where it is they know they need to act fast to get into this game so moments like this are not going to come that often they've got to grasp it they've got to take it of course 14 against 14 at the moment Claudia McDonald still in the bin for the Chiefs it's a little bit more space in both back lines now Across to Hartbury, narrow at the moment. Are they going to stick to the forward pack? They have an advantage. Still with Rachel Johnson, just controlling things. Going forward, but the referee blows up. Johnson tap and goes now, hit by Lewis. Bit of pushing and shoving. Well, Johnson wants to take it quickly. Lewis wanted to read it. Chiefs visibly unhappy about that, but... Is that just a case of two committed players? I'm pretty sure Lewis would not have been on in an onside position. Still going to look at those actions, I think, though. Just things bubbling here at Queen's Home. Difficult job for Dan Jones. There's a bit of niggle, as you'd expect in a final. They had the penalty advantage from the scrum, and I think that Exeter thought it was going forward. I think I thought it was going forward. Referee, however, said use it, which is why he then called for the penalty advantage, deemed it was over. But, well, I don't know. I, I really thought that was moving forward. Cecilia Tuipulotu. The gigantic frame of the Welsh international. Just 19 years old already. A big part of both club and country. She comes on for Laura Delgado. Heartbreak in the final last year with the Chiefs, of course. Moved to Cherry and Whites this season. And Spanish internationals work is done for the afternoon. Mr. Harbury throwing up a pod and taken in and secured. It's stolen the ball back in the line out. Muir looking for some outrunners Oldcroft in there Lewis I think just down getting a bit of cramp sunshine has been replaced by clouds overhead in Gloucester but it is still a warm muggy afternoon as George under some pressure hammers it down pitch he does turn McGovern she regathers to fly half and looking to find a gap in that cherry and white wall Robinson to the right thought better off it to the left she goes Ball on top. Difficult moments there for Robinson and then the half break. Good rock ball speed from Flo Robinson again now. McGovern to Cantona. Still yet to really get the better of her this afternoon. She's been excellent in defence, the England inside centre, and then better defence than the Cherry and White. The double hit on Tosi driving her back. Monaghan now lining up. The runners of the Chiefs, Robinson. Still keen to play, good step from Friday, did well to break contact. Still 14 on 14 at the moment. Claudia McDonald primed and ready on the side. Doidge takes it in. Robinson fancies a dart, down a bit of space she spotted. Ball lobbed back by Chiefs. All just a bit slow at the moment. Fatigue, you imagine, beginning to set in from these two sides. There have been a lot of work, a lot of hard work in some heavy heat. Now Rogers held up try in the first half. Looking for her 17th of the season. Reminder, she got four the last time she played against Gloucester Harbury. Beckett just making sure to not touch the ball. Stay on side. Those supporting Cherry and White just trying to make a bit of noise in defence. Friday dumped on the floor. How many phases have we seen from Exeter Chiefs as Maisie Allen trying to bustle her way through? Robinson, short to Leach, out to McGovern! Chiefs strike back! Great play from Exeter, going through their phases, staying patient. And the Premier 15's top point scorer... 
on the end of a flowing move in the end to get them back in the game. And it's exactly that patience, being able to just keep hold of the ball, going through the phases. At first, it didn't look like they were going anywhere, and then Maisie Allen spotted it really nicely, that start in. And then here, just a numbers game, nice quick hands, got a slight edge on the outside. But yeah, this is the carry that started it, brought the Gloucester defence in, and then you can see defence trying to get back, but they're not going to get back in time for those hands to finish. Yeah, it's really clever play around the breakdown, just the speed to get it away, but they're holding in the tacklers, which means it makes it longer for that fold to get round and be able to number up. McGovern in the corner, now lining up her own kick. It was Ailey Sinclair in there as the acting number nine. Crediting her to initial pass from Robinson. Vital couple of points this, considering the long way back. That real accuracy on the strike there from McGovern. Didn't really have the distance as well. It remains 24-12, but hope for the Chiefs, and they're back up to 15 as well. It just looked like she rushed her kick. Didn't go for her regular processes, but it gets them back into the game now. Neve Jones on for Beth and Lewis for Gloucester Hartbury, the hooker come flanker. Islands player of the year, Neve Jones. Been in the hooker, the six and the seven shirt this season. Versatility across the back row and in the front as well. Still time here for the Chiefs. We heard Susie Appleby say, you know, first half against Saracens, not up to standard. They played pretty well in the first 40 here, but didn't really see what we've seen from them all season in terms of structure. This is a bit better as Cantona comes onto the ball. Lined up in the middle was Sarah Beckett with the tackle. All action from the England number eight, of course, did win a final here with Harlequins a few years ago, beating Saracens, what is King's home today, and for the week, Queen's home. Robinson back to McGovern, holding the ball across, difficult for Singh, she's done well, turning just as she's about to take the ball, the fullback steps off that right boot, Johnson just Scragging her by the right foot. Penalty coming, goes to Hartbury's way. And Mohan, so many times this season from that sort of position, you'd see a tap and go. I think just taking a breather, trying to take a bit of a sting out of the game because it's been a good five minutes for the Chiefs. Yeah, and if I was Poppy Leach, I'd be speaking to the referee about some of the time wasting, walking to the restart, now taking their time and making a decision here. But Exodus putting themselves under all sorts of pressure, overplaying in their own 22. To then eventually kick it just sucks so much energy from them. And it just puts Gloucester now into a prime position. They're going to go for three points. Smart decision just to extend that lead. Uh, and the Singh lining this one up. Just the one yeah. successful kick so far. Also, this will eat into the clock as well. 30 seconds for the... Um... Six minutes, uh, six seconds for the kick. And also, sure we'll get closer to the time of Sophie Bridger returning as well. Dead centre for Emma Singh. Brilliant strike from Emma Singh. Easily had the distance, she's been kicking it so, so well, just not quite had the accuracy, but that always can be tricky for kickers when it's so central, but looks so confident walking up to the ball. And that is a pressure kick as well, it is in front of 9,000 people, like to nail it from there, like, and so calm, so composed, such a young player as well, very talented, and she's going to have a big future ahead of her.
Back up to 15 points, the difference now. Three scores needed for Exeter. Just over 20 minutes to go. Deutsch under this one, back in the sunshine. Appeals are forward. Play allowed to continue as Allen on the ball. Cantona, Sinclair. A really impressive season, the Scottish flyer. Spoke about the dominant tackling. Cecilia Turbolotti right into things at the moment. McGovern to Zachary. Haven't really seen the outside centre be in the game and have the influence that she usually does on proceedings. That's better from Exeter, over the halfway line, driving in the tackle and pumping the legs. They need the ball quickly, they haven't got it because it's been illegally stopped and Monaghan the one punished. Yeah, you mentioned we haven't seen too much of Zachary or the outside back. That's because Gloucester Harby defend the wide channel so well. They manage to stay nice and square, allow the play to get to the outside, then they go and make their shot. Those supporting the Chiefs just trying to make a bit of noise in the shed as we see this carry again. Abby Fleming right into proceeding straight away, the Welsh international. What's so good about that is that she's got two players hanging off her, but she's not going down in the contact area. She's fighting for every single inch to get her team into a good position. And on the back of it, a penalty, so it ends up being 40 metres instead of five. In from Satoshi now, who's bandaged up on the head. Buster Harvey trying to drive this back out into touch, which they have done. Brilliant response. They saw the opportunity to shove the Chiefs back, and they've dumped them into touch. And they'll now have the throw. No, I take that back. There's a, a spot by the referee. I was going to say, that's good. otherwise that's really gutting for Exeter as they're just starting to turn it round. But it's around execution and be, making sure uh, they're clinical as well. But they get another shot this time at the, at the scrum. Just look across the heartbeat. There's no hesitation from any player. They're all on the same page. They know exactly what they want to do there. Really disruptive and dominant. Confirmation, we're back at 15 against 15. Sophie Bridger on the pitch for the Cherry and White. Free kick from the scrum. Johnson taps and they're off and running. Exeter, they need to play the ball quickly. They need scores to get themselves back. This stop start nature of the game continues. Oh, it's so frustrating for Exeter. They're just compounding error on error. They're normally one of the best teams at executing when they enter into the 22. But here, it's a really good rip on the ball. You could argue that maybe the tackle was complete. So Flo Robinson wasn't expecting it. But again, get a free kick at the scrum. Rachel Johnson goes off on her own, gets a double shot on. He just think just smarten up the play around in that 22. You can be, take your time, build patience to make the right decision to then try and convert it into points. Or being aware that if someone is going to do that, if Johnson's likely to do that, then everybody get with her. But at the minute, it's disjointed. Whereas, as you said, Gloucester, someone does something, they're all in on it immediately. They back them, they back them each other. Bench is beginning to be unloaded. Ebony Jeffries also on in the scrum cap for the Chiefs. Now, Cleaner Maloney enters the fray. Into the front row for Emily Totosi. Scrum, Estable. First bit of action is to scrum down. A couple of hobbles for Clakey George at the moment for Gloucester Harbury. Left leg heavily bandaged as Tosi, the first Chiefs try score, a couple of pats on the back. Gloucester Harbury trying to get the shove on at the set piece. All a bit scragged and loose, and it's 
come away with Gloucester Harbury in possession. Mohun causing all sorts of problems at the back of that scrum and now trying to cause some problems with the boots. That's clever play from McGovern, just using a foot to control the ball. A couple of half dummies trying to confuse the defensive line, not bought. Robinson to Leach, short for Fleming. Robinson now attempted intercept in the middle from Jones. Chiefs. Really yet to get going in this second half. Apart from that, Liv McGovern try. Good break there, though, by Rogers. We've yet to see the, the phase play so associated with Susie Appleby's side. What have they got here as Cantona throws it out the back? Johnson onto the far side, in and out from Maisie Allen, then just inexplicably lets go of the ball. Hunt standing at the back of the rug, no one there to support her. Eventually gives it to George. A bounce out is the assistant referee's call, and then she goes down again. She's struggling that Sherry and White's number 10. Exeter really just need to go back to what they're good at. They're, they're passing balls that aren't good quality. They're getting worse and worse as they go down the line. Get your big runners, get them to run hard, get good go forward, because from that, that's where they're then going to be able to have the structure to play wide. But at the minute, they're just throwing passes that aren't going, and it looks a bit desperate. They just need to control it and go forward. But that's it, they're just desperate, aren't they? They're trying to force things, trying to play their hand because they know that they're chasing the scoreboard. That's why you really need your leaders within that team to pull everyone together, recognise how much time is on the clock. A simple execution in, in the red zone 22 gets them right back into the game. It's just about being able to manage that. Kelsey Jones off, Connie Fowle on for Gloucester Heartbreak. Hey, Blakey George. The referee just asking Mo Hunt, is Clakey George going off? Mo Hunt saying, I doubt it. She's looks in a lot of bother there. Costa Harbury number 10. As soon as she struck that ball, she went down. It's good management by the referee, isn't it? Not allowing anything to slow the game down. It'll be a big difference seeing Peggy George go off, considering the tactical ability that she's got to pull the strings, marshal the backfield and play her players into the right positions. Charlie Jacoby on for the Chiefs. And Lisa Neumann will come into the backfield. Sophie Bridger, 10 option. Neumann on for Clakey George, so we'll see how Gloucester Hartbury resets. One of the replacements, Connie Powell, into the frame. Final game for Gloucester Hartbury, off to Harlequins in the summer. First touch of the ball for Bridger. As the sun comes out, approaching the last 15 minutes as Gloucester Hartbury get a penalty. And again, Mo Hunt just slowing down proceedings. Now the, the kicking game of Clakey George, which has been such a factor, now not in play, Sophie Bridger will try and guide her team around the park. But again, it's just smart play. Tactically, they're doing really well because actually you could sense that maybe that, that quick tap might go. They might flood it in, but actually that's absolutely right. They've got the referee shouted, no, lost. They still went in. They have the penalty. Slow it down. Gloucester aren't in a rush. Do everything tactically. Go set piece. Play off of that. Really smart play. And Kate Zachary's got to be better there. She can hear the instructions from the referee. Connie Powell struggling to hit a mark. Heard came through trying to dive on the ball, but it wriggled through. And Exeter have themselves possession. Still this 15-point deficit. It's got the Harbury in defence now trying to come through. And the counter ruck. They've stolen the ball. Mohan has possession. To a Pilotu. Helps it on. Costa Harbury. Looking to try and find numbers. Monaghan helps it off to Tatiana Heard. Brought down just inside the touchline. Cries of Gloucester ringing around Queen's home. 
Howell into the fray again. Surely a try here secures the game for the Cherry and Whites. Hunt, Bridger, gets it out of contact well. Bit of trouble securing possession here. And then the Chiefs have the penalty. Well, a big, big moment in defence, just as it looked like Gloucester Hartbury were getting in behind Exeter and holding on the call. Yeah, massive turnover from Mays Allen. If they don't turn over there, Gloucester Hartbury going in, and that is the game. Yeah, on your side. And the ball not gone into touch and Gloucester Harbury back in possession Rugman bounces off one still going the winger we spoke about the dangerous moments they're back at it again to a Pilotu charging towards the try line Hunt is assessing her options Bridger the replacement 10 so elusive in the loose just trying to control things in the absence of George and Gloucester Harbury, you're going to start seeing this towards the end. There's still some time to go, but they have the clock, they have the lead, and they just want control. But they won't stop searching for another try. Short now, looking for Oldcroft, makes a good couple of metres with a clever step. It's patient at the moment. Zachary, great hit on Beckett, came from an angle she couldn't see. Powell helps it on to a Pilotu. Fresh legs to Augusta Hartbury, just getting into the effort. Oldcroft, how much work has she got through today? Breaking the gain line again. Looking down the blind side, Monaghan now, big dummy, out the back to Bridger, did well to hold on to it, still going towards the line, looking to roll over. It's already on the goal line. Held up over the goal line, it'll be the dropout. Credit the Chiefs defence there, scrambling across. A couple of interesting attacking moments for the Cherry and White. So, so close to a fifth. But also comes from the pressure of um, Exeter not making touch. Singh now, coming back again. Wave after wave of attack. This team, remember. So, so dangerous now in the loose still going brought down the hooker great break from the replacement it's slow for the Chiefs Rugman pick and go for the base of the ruck just brought down all a bit loose power game to the left hand side Monaghan she's driven back she's got Oldcroft and to a Pilotti to aim for Hunt building again noise ringing round Queen's home can they get this fifth try advantage on the plate Hunt looking for options. Wide left and wide right. People are lurking straight down the middle is Tua Pilotu. Hunt now looking deep. Coming through is Zachary. Uses her feet to get the ball and immediately the referee dives into his pocket. Yellow card. Thumbs up from Kate Zachary. Making a bit of noise. Trying to get the Chiefs fans going. But a bizarre decision, you'd have to say, with a team so far down and almost a guaranteed yellow card. Yeah, just, I honestly sometimes don't know what Exeter are thinking when they're under pressure. They can put out some moments of brilliance, but they can also do things that just leave everybody baffled. But offside, running from out to in, trying to disrupt the ball when they already have an advantage. It's just that, that's the even crazy bit. They had the advantage. Yeah, I think sometimes, when, you know, when it is advantage, you just need to kill the play because you know that teams will try things. The referee allow the phases to build, but right from the, the 20, the goal line dropout just got disconnected, which allowed them all this momentum with Connie Powell making an impact off the bench, getting them front foot, and now they come alive. And for me, the width that Gloucester Hartbury are presenting, they've got players literally sitting out on the edge, which then challenges. See the yellow card incident from... Zachary trying to get those supporting the Chiefs going but is that a decision with just over 10 minutes left that puts pay to any hopes of a comeback I don't 
think it was the action of going for the kick, but the infringement beforehand to why she's been yellow carded. Connie Powell Thank you. getting the call from England teammate Maud Muir. It's not been the cleanest of line-out performances from the Cherry and Whites all afternoon. Can they make it count here? To the front, Matthews takes it. Through come the Cherry and White shirts. Exeter surely look to bring them all down there, but play allowed to continue. Still with the Chiefs. To a Pilotu around the fringes. Staying with the forwards. Powell now with the carry. Oldcroft at the back there. They're back in their forward game. The Cherry and Whites. Round the corner they go again. Looking for this fifth drive. Hunt. Beckett. Out to the wide channel. Heard for the corner. Knock on. Knock on in the act of scoring. Heard might have injured herself as well. So, so close to a fifth. But Exeter keep them out. Well, Heard was already hobbling from earlier. I didn't. I thought it was a cramp initially, but you can see she's uncomfortable even before she gets that ball. So she is struggling uh, there, and then a good tackle across, but just loses it just briefly before putting it down. I mean, how many times have we seen Tatiana Heard score from that code range in a red and white shirt, both for her country and here? But what about the hands from Sarah Beckett? Recognise the winger flying up, just does enough to shift the ball to the outside. And with a 100% fit Tatiana Heard, that would have been five points. Well, you almost can't tell if these injuries are really bad cramp because the heat will affect so, so many players. Second's okay. Yeah. Bianca Blackburn now on. All the backs replacements on for the Cherry and White. Five metre scrum to Exeter. Johnson will pick and go. Hit by Blackburn. Looks as if she'll slot into nine. I think Mo Hunt will be playing a bit of fly half to close out the game. Extra Chiefs, what have they got? They've put so much into this season. They've been pressed so many times. They do have a cup competition to fall back on, but they were so desperate for a double. Singh now looking to return this with some interest. Has ran really well from deep positions. And at the moment, it's her penalty, a final score that is taking Gloucester Hartbury to a first ever Allianz Premier 15s title. Bridger. Powell. Been a bundle of energy since coming onto the pitch. Replacement hooker. Bridger. Short for Ruckman on a good line back inside. Blackburn now, dart down the blind side. Venner to Powell. High tackle, penalty advantage coming Gloucester Harbury's way as well. They're managing this game so well as Bridger knew she had the penalty, so tried a bit of the spectacular. And again, valuable seconds from the Cherry and Whites being eaten up. Yeah, and this Gloucester backline has been completely reorganised. They've had Toki go off, they've had players move around as they wouldn't have expected, but they're just playing so seamlessly. Uh, it almost doesn't matter what number they've got on their back, they're just linking together and playing so well. And there we go, the noise you're hearing, the attendance at the Premier 15's final. 9,668 have come, a record for the final. And you say, I nearly said the home fans, and of course this is a neutral venue for the final, but many around the Gloucester area have come out and support the team that finished top of the pile. Brilliant effort from everyone involved at both the club and at the RFU. Attendance is growing in the women's game, growing for the Red Roses. And you've certainly heard a bit of noise. I can't remember a club game being this loud. It's been superb atmosphere as Maud Muir gets a big clap from those supporting the home faithful as a big hug as well for the starting front row. On the pitch, what can the Costa Harbury forwards produce? Mo Hunt desperately trying to get people out of the way. People have, I think, lost some of the ball. The referee happy in terms of those coming in. Maloney in there as well. Call is use it. Hunt, Beckett, bit of bundle of energy and power for the afternoon, Sarah Beckett. 
Looking to try and roll to the right-hand side. That is just short. Mohan wants the ball. Looking, assessing. What have they got here? Bridger. Space out wide. Here's Lisa Newman for the try. Surely the winning score for Gloucester Hartbury. They've been so, so patient. Neumann goes over. Queen Tome erupts. The fifth score has to be the winning score. And a chance for the league leaders to just enjoy the final few minutes. They've overpowered the Chiefs, sucked them in and crossed with a, an absolute walkover in the end. Well, there were two players outside. We had Blank, Bianca Blackburn out on the wing uh, there, but didn't, didn't need them. Just a good carry. Uh, Benner as well on the outside, but just the way that that, that doesn't just happen. They created that by the, the phases of play before that, made that defence really, really tighten up, and then just execution to get the ball wide at the right time. Yeah, they've been banging on the door for a while, and initially Exeter did so well, didn't they, to disrupt the driving more, but it actually sucked everybody in and gave them the outside. Emerson now looking to add a couple more. a whistle from Emma Singh. Three from five for her this afternoon. 34-12 the lead goes to. And what has been an impressive final performance just gains another couple of points as we see Neumann's finish again here. Celebrations all round. The Shed enjoyed that one. Going over for what was a stroll as a snake from uh, Sophie Bridger there. Chiefs will Keep going till the final whistle. Five minutes to go, but you have to say these will all be consolation scores now. Yeah, the second final that Exeter have been in and likely walking away as uh, runners up again. So they're going to have to really regroup with that because they can put in some amazing performances, but they just get outdone in the, in the big games. Run dead centre of the pitch. Mari McDonald, the replacement number nine. Mo Hunt trying to put her under pressure. Looking to break down that blind side. Jeffries with the carry then, but she's forced backwards. Best defence in the league. Still going as Mayer learned into contact there. It's a good drive from the Chiefs. McDonald short to Jacoby with the carry. Leach into the fray. Fleming with the support work. All tight and narrow at the moment for Exeter. Drums trying to make a bit of noise to support these women in black to the blind side. They have a look. Got the Harbury bodies all up there now trying to roll away. Dan Jones just trying to make sure they get some clean ball. Leach looking to loop one out to the far side. What a cover tackle that is from Emma Singh. Had to use all her arm strength there to just keep it up. So, so close to Exeter. Thank you. Mo Hunt, the only defender down the blind side. Costa Hartbury ready on the line. They go again. Exeter do have a consolation score. Ebony Jeffries going over. Still smiles on the Costa Hartbury bench, but Ebony Jeffries for what's been a tough afternoon's work for Exeter. They'll keep going in the closing stages. She crosses from close range. Yes, you know, you never see a team get to a final that don't have heart and desire right to the 80th minute. And here they've worked so hard in the second half, had chances and not been able to take them. And in this instant, just be really patient. Don't try and rush the play. Recognise that Mo Hunt was defending the blind side. Let's play open. And then they get their rewards in the end. 
I'm still getting over that empty yeah, tackle. That was amazing yeah. beforehand. Uh, the strength to be able to. I thought they were in in the corner initially, but they recovered, worked it well, brought back into the score. Kick from Cantona. Lovely strike from the inside centre. Regular kicker from the Chiefs, their top ever point scorer. Take sex are up to 19. I think having played in a couple of finals, it's all about the start. The way that you start the game often flows with the momentum through to the 80th minute. And the way that Gloucester Hartbury came out in those opening minutes, as they did in the semi-final, they've been able to keep hold of that momentum and that pressure onto the opposition all the way through. Cries of Gloucester ringing around Queen's home. Into the final minute. Chance to just enjoy the rugby. There's still some phases to play out, but knowing the game's secure, knowing they've won as Chiefs got the ball on. We'll have a scrum advantage for Gloucester Harbury playing. Matthews, little hitch kick into contact. Can they score a six? Down the blind side they go. Penalty coming Chiefs way. <laughs> the locals disagreeing with whatever Dan Jones saw there, holding on the call. Kick to touch will mean an extra line out. Just having a look at the play of the match there and Clakey George performance. The countdown begins, but how good has she been this afternoon? Yeah, she's been so good to us. She's the game management, making sure Gloucester Hartley are playing in the right areas of the field. And those pressure point moments, her ability just tactically be able to turn the game on its head. She's been outstanding all season, and she really brought it today in the final. We'll try and get a word with Clakey George, as well as those in the Gloucester Hartley camp. And the Chiefs as well, in the post-match reaction with Lauren Smith. This is the final play of the game moments for those supporting Cherry and White at Queen's home to save up. The players are already pitch side. Tony Powell coming through, stealing the ball. Mo Hunt having a look around. All they've got to do is shove the ball out. Bridger, big left hoof into touch. Gloucester Hartbury, the Allianz Premier 15 champions in 2023. A first league title for the Cherry and Whites, overcoming Exeter Chiefs in the West Country Derby. Five tries in the final. Huge smiles on those around Queen's home. What is essentially a home final for them. The celebrations begin. Special, special moments for those in Cherry and White. They finished top of the pile. And they've come away beating Bristol Bears in the semi-final. And they've overcome Exeter Chiefs in the final. What a season, particularly Mo Hunt has had. World Cup heartache at the start of it. Guided her team round in the opening rounds. It's been brilliant in terms of her individual performances and what she's done. And now has rounded it off being a Premier 15s winner. They are the best side in England. Just the two losses across the regular campaign. And when it's come to knockout rugby, to cup finals rugby, they have come through it. Disappointment for extra Chiefs again. Two finals in a row. Tears from Kelsey Jones. Emotion, imagine, will come out for a lot of these players. Score of the first try of the game. A 17-7 lead at the break and Gloucester heartbreak pulled away again in the second half 
Rachel Lund, Sarah Beckett, a penalty try, as well as Emma Singh's penalty, and Lisa Neumann as well. But this is the moment from Bridger. One of the best feelings around, you imagine, knowing all you've got to do, boot into touch, and the celebrations begin. Scenes on the bench with those coming down as well. And Ellie Rugman, too much. All the graft, all the difficulty, all the emotion, everything that's been put out across the season. Starting with the Rugby World Cup, of course, in New Zealand, but many of these players in the cup competition before that. Nine, ten months of rugby. And it's all come down to this. Sean Lynn, so successful with the university sides at Hartbury. 22 years he's been part of this setup at that campus and now taken charge of Costa Hartbury and has secured them a first ever Premier 15s title. We'll get some reaction pitch side Lauren Smith with Rachel Burford and Cat Merchant will be speaking to both camps as well I'll be wandering around on the pitch but here is how the game played out 50-50 possession in the end Buster Harbury nudging ahead in carries and just the meters made as well Exeter doing more tackling nudging ahead as well on territory Gloucester Harbury but tells you a story of a game that's been so so close in many ways in fact, that's actually just flicking over 50-50. An extra right in this game, but the clinical nature of them in terms of what they've done this season. Gloucester Harbury on show this afternoon. Five tries across King's home. And that's the most important stat, of course, of the day. Bit of noise here as the tunnels form from both teams. Still going through the usual post-match presentations. Just having a word with Clakey, George and Zoe Oldcroft speaking post-match. Some great moments here on the wide shot there of uh, what is Queen's home. The shed slightly emptied out though. Those supporting the Exeter Chiefs beginning to make their way towards the exit. Some people come down pitch side as well. There'll be selfies, there'll be autographs, there'll be lots going on post-match. And you imagine there'll be some party in Gloucester tonight. Such a long season. Great moments and great shots from Mo Hunt. And all these Gloucester Harbury players, some will move on. This will be the final game in cherry and white for them. And they will go out as champions. All right, let's get a bit of reaction for the Gloucester Harbury camp. And Zoe Oldcroft has got gone pitch side. And we'll be down with Rachel and in just a second but first let's get a word with Zoe Oldcroft she's speaking to Lauren Smith absolutely amazing from like the start of the season we just built and built that momentum like the main thing that we've had is just that belief that we can do it and obviously today it really showed that we we can do it like honestly I'm so so proud of every single one of the girls and um, the girls that couldn't quite take the field today they've been in a, a huge part of it as well and then credit to Exeter as well for, for coming here today in front of an absolute amazing 
crowd at King's Service. Uh, yeah. How are you containing your emotion? Especially at the start of the year when you weren't sure how this new team, you made a lot of new recruits, you didn't know how they were going to bed in, and now you're standing at a final. I, know, I honestly can't quite put it into words. Like, it's, it's so cliche, but yeah, I have no idea what to say right now. I'm just absolutely buzzing, yeah. <laughs> what are the celebrations going to be like? Wild, absolutely wild. <laughs> Go and enjoy with your teammates. Congratulations. It was incredible to watch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to get a word there from the co-captain of Gloucester Hartbury, Zoe Oldcroft, as we see Sean Lynn getting drenched by some of his players. We'll have all the uh, final presentations and we'll go through the medals. Nigel Gillingham, president of the RFU, going through proceedings. And first, the referee team, Dan Jones, Andrew Jackson, Alex Thomas and Charlie Gaither all getting their medals and what was a tricky game at times to referee let's get a bit more reaction though from the Gloucester Harbury camp whilst we go through some of the medal presentations and Clakey George is now with Lauren Smith Clakey player of the match in the Allianz Premier 15's final how do you even begin to sum that up I haven't got many words to be honest. Um, I'm just proud of the group of performers they put out there today. They literally put everything into it. We always talk about Gloucester just being just a, a cosm of people who just love each other, love to play rugby, and it's really got the best out of you all season. What would you say to your teammates right now? Bloody well done, like honestly, like we've it's been a long season, 50 week season, and to be able to finish it like that, like it's unreal. Perfect bookend because you opened against Exeter Chiefs at the beginning of the year. You've closed winning against Exeter Chiefs at the end. Where do we go from here? How do we improve on this next season? Um, hopefully just go from strength to strength here. We won't look too much on to next season now. We'll enjoy tonight and the next few days. Um, and then we'll go from there. I hate to think what's going to happen in Gloucester tonight. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. That's all I can say. <laughs> go enjoy with your teammates. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Clakey George there with Lauren. Seeing more of the pictures as Susie Appleby. It'll be a huge disappointment for her. Really running into the camera there, but here's the presentation. Bill Sweeney, Chief Executive of the RFU, giving out the second place medals to Extra Chiefs. Still been a, another impressive campaign for a side that is, of course, just three years old. And they'll be back. They've been one of the most impressive performers, of course, in the Premier 15s the past couple of seasons. And disappointment today, but I'm sure they will recover. Let's uh, head pitch side again. And Cat Merchant and Rachel Burford and will continue to get a bit of reaction as they join Lauren Smith. It's such a wonderful feeling, isn't it? Being pitch side in a final where the home team is crowned victorious after Rachel has been at such a long season. When you closed off commentary, what was your initial kind of emotion? the entire season you know they've been top of the league for the, the majority I think there was one time where Exeter slipped to the top but the way that they displayed the way that they played the game of rugby over the season has been so inspiring and I think you know deserved winners they won the regular season and today they've topped it off and they had a really strong comprehensive win today Cat just shy of 10,000 people in this stadium I mean we spoke about the growth of the women's game before the match but I mean, it's building here, isn't it? You yeah, just feel it. It genuinely, year on year, like I've been doing this since I've retired now, and every single year it just impresses me so much because look at the people around. It's just been absolutely incredible. And I've, I've said this before about when I grew up, 
I grew up in Gloucester. I used to come down to the shed. I used to watch the men play. And I remember thinking then, imagine how cool it would be if the women do this. And they go and they do it. And it does make me quite emotional thinking about it, just how far it's come. And credit to these amazing athletes that are out there putting in performances like this. And then we get to be here talking about them. So it's just, it's awesome. It's not been the smoothest of sailing, Rachel, because that second half definitely not that it put pressure on Gloucester, but there are definitely moments where we were thinking, oh my God, discipline's getting the better of a few of them out there today. Yeah, and you, you've got to credit Exeter at times. They put themselves into some really great attacking opportunities. But the difference we saw today is the pressure got to them and they couldn't convert them into points. And on the flip side of that, Gloucester found a way every single time to get the turnover, to force the error on the opposition. And I think, you know, the crowd had something to do with that as well. There we go. The moment we've all been waiting for. Gloucester Harbury lift the Alliance Premier 15 trophy. They are champions. And look at those celebrations. As the Gloucester faithful adorn the stadium with cheers and hollers. I mean, it's a wonderful atmosphere to be a part of. I can't even imagine what those girls are feeling right now. Yeah, I mean, for all of them, it's been a really long journey. And moments like today, you'll cherish for the rest of your life. Te memories and emotions and everything that's built up toward today. They're memories that they won't ever forget about. Kat, let's talk about the kicking game, because Blakey Jaws, player of the match, was at the centre of a lot of what Gloucester were doing. We had that beautiful 15-22, but Gloucester on the front foot, but she was pivotal. It's more, um, it's not just the execution of it, it's the tactical ability and the mindset to be able to see exactly when it's on, and she timed that really well today. Whenever the Exeter back three were out of position, she spotted it. That ball went in behind. Ball hit grass a lot, and it never should. For the other side, you should be fielding it. But they, uh, yeah, just absolutely smart. Pinpoint accuracy, nailed it. You know who I'd love to speak to? Emma Singh. When she lined up on 60 minutes to take that penalty kick, not that it was a crux kick or anything, but in front of this crowd, Rachel, how, how did she even begin to hold her nerve, just from a player's perspective? Yeah, well, I reckon, you know, probably Mo Hunt had a little word in her ear being like, whether you get this or not, it's rolling down some of the clock, but I back you to do it. So just taking a bit of pressure off of her. But I think a 43-metre kick from the centre of the pitch, I mean, that's one definitely for, for the books and for the Instagram reel for her. Cap, a word for Exeter, because... I mean, I was listening to your commentary throughout and, and tactically you both seem to think that they were just making a few of the wrong decisions at the wrong times and it cost them. Yeah. I mean, we've got a whole off season to work on this, but what what was Susie Appleby walk away thinking? I, I think it is purely tactical because they have physicality out there. They have big ball carriers. They know how to carry. They've got pacey wingers that have footwork and they can do that. But at times when they are under pressure, they make decisions which are just a little bit bizarre uh, at, at times and I think they don't all buy into the same thing. When they do, it looks great and you can see them beating any opposition but when they're disjointed and tactically start doing things, that's when it starts to spiral and they actually put a lot of the pressure that came on them today, they put on themselves. I'd hate to close out a final only talking about the negative of a team, but the positive was that they did break that infamous loss of defence on, on numerous occasions whilst it's still stood firm in part. But there are a lot of positives that this group of players from Exeter can take away. Yeah, look, I think it'll be a challenging watch for them to look back at how many opportunities that they had, how many pressure points and moments that they had to turn the momentum around and actually take the lead, but they didn't quite take. And I think that's something that they'll want to focus on next season. How do they start really well and hold on to that momentum through to the 80? How much fire is this team going to have knowing they've come to two finals and come off the wrong side of both? Well, having been in two and lost two, we won it the following season. So, look, it definitely keeps you motivated. It fires you up. It makes you go away and look at your detail. Now, look, if they get a couple of things right today, we could have been looking at a different result. So there's not a lot in their game that you can critique. But I think around that kind of leadership and those decision-making whilst under pressure, that's something that they need to really look at. And Kat, what a season they've had. They've navigated the entirety of the Allianz Premier 15s with only three losses. The only team to do better lost the heart, Yeah, there, there's been some great performances, and I think last week, uh, sorry, two weeks ago for Exeter and Saris, unfortunately that was probably their final, I think, uh, for them, like, and I think they gave their all in that one, they've really got it, and the emotional toll that that can take, I think possibly they played their final then. Gloucester came out fresh at it, ready to take it, but both incredible teams, and it's not the last we've seen of Exeter.
Well, we can go into the middle of Malay where Nathan Middleton has a very special, very happy guest. Special group, it's not players, it's staff, everyone is to be here in this crowd. It's just a left -right. Thank you to everyone. It's such an amazing occasion. There was so much noise this afternoon. Essentially, you're home crowd, but the noise that happened for these fans today, it was even more alive. Definitely, you know, it's uh, something special because it was a great, great game out there. But it's, we've got 10,000 here today. What is in Ali and Fremen? Such a special, special for the game. And thank you to everyone. How pleased with you with how your team performed? It's finals rugby in terms of what they put out there for that 80 minutes. I've been pleased with them all season. I, they just keep going and going. It's been a long old season, but uh, thank you. In terms of like Mo Hunt, Sarah Beckett, difficult start to year with obviously not their World Cup selection. They've come back and two of the standout performers this afternoon, Glakey George, Alex Matthews. You've had some stunning individual performances. Just in terms of what the individuals have done to this squad, kind of how pleased for you those on an individual level? It just shows, didn't it? The character, the, the individual that uh, Sarah Beckett and Mo Hunt, you know, at the beginning of the year they were very disappointed. But that sport, sometimes you don't get selection, it doesn't go your way. But they've just showed what they can do and put everything, control what they can, and that's something, you know, special in everything they've done. Is this the start of something? It truly is. Congratulations, congratulations. Thank you, Sean. He's like a proud dad, isn't he, Sean Lynn? Every time you hear him waxing lyrical about his ladies, but that really was a comprehensive performance. If you look over the history, Cat, of Gloucester Harbury, it was a sixth, it was a fifth, it was a fourth, it was a sixth. And now they're standing in a final. What are the big changes this year? I think they just really seem to have believed in themselves and something seemed different about them. The way they even just walk onto the pitch, everything about them, it seems to have a really good co culture. Sean Lynn, I think, as well, is so positive. Whenever he speaks about them, he's installed that into them. But at the very start of the season, and the one that stands out for me is the fact that they put 50 points on Saris. When they did that, I was like, this team is winning. There is almost no doubt in my mind that, they, that they'll do it. Now, they had wobbles along the way in terms of sometimes not being quite switched on, but they're, they're quite close to as full as a complete team as you can get. Yeah, and I think, you know, historically, they really struggled to finish games and close them out. They would go ahead and then not be able to finish. And they focused this year on being an 80-minute performance team, and they've delivered on that. They've worked so hard on their strength and conditioning to allow them to play the rugby that they want to play at such a high level, high tempo, in order to be able to take games like today and win. It's incredible, isn't it? And to do it in front of the home crowd, we spoke about kind of emotional reaction. This is their first Alliance Premier 15's final. They're in front of 10,000 of their own people. I mean, it makes for a very special moment, but how they dealt with the pressure of Rachel, that's yeah. impressive. It was really impressive, and I don't know if anybody remembers, but I was looking at the, the faces of the players who came out, got into the huddle, Mohan and Zoe Alcoff, just all business. Like, yes, we're, what we're doing is really incredible, but it's about what we do for 80 minutes so that we can kick on and keep the reputation that they're building. I mean, for them, they'll look back on it and enjoy it, and that's what you do as players. You try and stay in the moment and then reflect after and enjoy all those parts. One woman who no doubt enjoyed it. She's out there in the middle of it all with Nathan Middleton. Premier 15's champion for a second time. How does that feel? Oh, I'm buzzing, buzzing. I'm absolutely exhausted. Thank gosh the girls dug deep when they went off. Um, they did a fantastic job, but just delighted. I'm delighted for these fans. Everyone that turned out was a great game of rugby and it's just buzzing that we could come out on the right side of it. Bit of a roller coaster happening for you, the yellow card, but the try as well. Kind of how was the 80 minutes from your point of view? Tiring, hot. I was trying to find shade on this side as much as I could, but it was tough. But every every single drop of it is worth it. Every single bit of this season has been worth it for this. Talk about the season for you individually. Obviously, it's been a lot made of yourself and Mo missing out on the World Cup. You came back, responded, you set yourself into a new group. Kind of how pleased have you been of what happened here today? Couldn't have gone better for us, you know. Being able to do it at Queen's Home as it's been renamed for the week, um, just incredible. Um, you know, it was a big move for me to come here. I was happy at Quinn's, but made a decision to move and feel like I've done the absolute most that I could with it. And I'm just buzzing. Like Mo and I went on a bit of a roller coaster this season, and to be able to drag each other through that and come out on top, it feels 
unbelievable. Talk about the atmosphere. I know this is a neutral venue technically today, but obviously a lot of Gloucester fans came out. Um, the atmosphere seemed incredible on the pitch. How good is the shed? How good is the shed? Oh, sorry, I just keep, I can't keep saying that. I'm just so buzzing. I don't know what to say. I'm just absolutely buzzing. And this group of girls have been incredible. They lifted me from probably my lowest moment. And oh, I'm just buzzing. I'm buzzing through it for the coaches. You know, I probably think coming here the best version of myself with what happened and they've dragged me to be the best version of myself and I'm just delighted I could do it for them well we could do it there's been a lot said about the circus and the good vibes and everything around Gloucester Harbour kind of what is it that in terms of around the club that makes things so special the fun everything's with a smile on your face we work really hard but it's with a smile on our face and everybody wants to do it for everybody else you know 23 took the field today but there's a group of about 50 players you know through the pathway and through this group some of them missed out today and it's really disappointing, but they never let that show in training and they came out and did the best they could. They ran like Exeter and Prep does the best for this game and he's paid dividends and we're champions. So, yeah, it's mental. Go and enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So, Sarah Beckett there saying it's all down to having a little bit of fun, but of course, both her and Mo Hunt have been such a pivotal force in this team and in part because they were unfortunately left out of international duty. How do you think that acts as a motivator and almost a catalyst for what the team has potentially performed over the course of the season? Oh, definitely. That will have a huge impact into it because you always want to put everything you, you have into your club. It's the, it's the heart, it's the passion of what you do, whether that leads on to international or not. But um, the fact that they weren't selected and it was quite heartbreaking for both of them, they've both been very open about that. Of course, that's going to drive them on because moments like this, who, not many people are going to get a moment like this in their lifetime. So they've just done that, smashed it at one, and, and incredible. Yeah, and I think they've both proven a point. You know, Natasha Hump, probably the best nine in the league this year, got the recognition of the player of the year. And Sarah Beckett, every single week, every single day that she's performed for this team, she's shown exactly what she's about. And you just recognise, if you allow an environment to thrive and players to be who they want to be and perform the way that they, you know, brings out the best in them, then look what you can get. How big of an impact did they both have on this game? Oh yeah, huge. Like uh, Mo, like you can just all over the pitch, and it's it's not just her line breaking, it's not just her her kicks. It's she marshals them really well. Like, you know, she's manhandling them most of the time, isn't she? Like organising them, telling them where to go. And Beckett with the big hit straight away with line breaks, try scoring ability, and you can just see them cheering everyone else up, and that's the impact that you can have, not just physically playing, but that energy that you have as well. Yeah, and I think for both of them, you know, they're big big game players but they do all of their basics really really well they get that element of their game absolutely spot on and then the the, the sprinkle of x factor comes around that and as kat said mo hunt just she's so clinical around her decision making whether or not to play the ball to be patient with it she's so smart in that kind of area that it just allows everybody else to have the confidence around what they're doing of course with every success there also has to be a team on the other side Nathan Middleton is catching up with Susie Appleby. Susie, commiserations this afternoon. A disappointing, obviously, day for your club. What did you make of that final? Um, I thought <laughs> the better team came out on top, sadly, and that's what, often what finals are about. We didn't put enough pressure on them, especially in the first half. We just kept turning it back on ourselves, and, and you can't do that and give up as much ball to a team like Gloucester Hartbury, who on their day were very, very good. So um, congratulations to them. Uh, we're gutted, but... You know, that's sport, sadly. I know today obviously will hurt. In terms of the bigger picture, back-to-back -back finals, back-to-back -back Allianz Cups, in terms of what you built in three years, I know today will hurt. Can you look back and kind of what is going on at your club? Uh, well, we're really proud of what we're doing. You know, we're building, and that's merely the message. Um, you know, we've got a really good setup coming through the college and the uni that are creating players. Uh, we've got players coming to our club like Claudia McDonald, who's an England player. You know, we've got some wonderful, wonderful players with a fantastic support network. So the future is very bright. Today really hurts um, because we're better than that. But finals are pressure situations, and and you know, we didn't we didn't convert opportunities that today. In terms of it hurts. Are you disappointed in terms of what your team put out there, considering yeah. how you played? Yeah, absolutely gutted about our performance. A um, bit, bit similar to last year, actually. And I, I don't know what you do about that. We won't try and solve it today, but we need to solve it in the future because the main message is we'll get around each other. We didn't suddenly become a poor tide. You know, we've had a really good season with some real highs, but this is one of the low moments that we have to pull together and, and, and you know, and learn from and move forward.
again, I don't want to focus on, on the disappointment. In terms of a day for women's rugby, in terms of you being kind of around 9,000 here today, a bit of an atmosphere, it, it felt like a, a real special occasion on a season of so many special occasions for women's rugby. Oh, it's unreal. You know, over 9,000 people coming to King's Home to watch a final is immense. Imagine, you know, we, we talked about this a year or two ago. It just wouldn't be the case. 82,000 at Twickers for England v France. Honestly, the game is gonna, in an amazing place. The role models are players, are tremendous players and advocates for, for, for themselves, but also bringing on the future. You see loads of girls and boys here and they want to play. And that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yes, we're disappointed now, but tomorrow we'll get up and be excited about what happened today, you know, from a bigger picture perspective. And, and you know, everyone will go again. Congratulations, Susie. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Susie Appleby there chatting to Nathan Middleton and look who we have found, a very happy Sean Lynn. We are in front of nearly 10,000 people at your spiritual home of Queen's Home Stadium and you have just won an Allianz Premier 15th title. How do you even sum up that emotion? Uh, it's just amazing, you know, and uh, I was talking uh, to Mo last week and just about it's something special winning a league and then you come into the cup and to to do that as well it's uh double bubble i'm happy with it very very happy i mean teams can have the best talent the best game plan but sometimes it comes down to that culture and that togetherness and, and that's something that you as a whole squad are really really proud about oh definitely uh, that that is for me i'm just all about togetherness and you'll go through some tough times and you go through some good times cherish the good times but pull together more on those tough times and there's certain individuals out there you look at Sarah Beckett, Mo Hunt, they came through those tough times and, and cherish this now it's it's amazing. Does it feel like those tough times have galvanized the squad to where it is today? Well that's the squad we've got it wasn't just individuals taking it on it's the squad taking on that as well so I, I can't fault them and it's the staff that I've got um, everything about it and I had a huddle there with staff and just saying thank you so much. It's a long season for players but also for staff as well. And what are the celebration plans beginning with? Uh, celebration plans, <laughs> definitely. I just want everyone to be family involved, everybody get involved. Uh, it's just amazing. So we'll go Saturday, Sunday, rugby dinner Tuesday night. Very special. Feels like the Gloucester thing to do. Just one big family celebrating the great successes of an incredible season. Oh, it is definite. You know, we had Lewis Ludlow, our, the club captain, come on Thursday. And he was, he's got his wedding today. And then it was just lovely to see George Skivington with the players here today. Uh, that, that's what it is. We set the our stall out and uh, it's been brilliant playing at King's Home as well. Have you walked away from this, looking at the style that you're playing and everything that they put out onto that field today, just feeling exceptionally proud, even like regardless of the results? Oh, very proud. Uh, me and Reese Oakley were talking in the week actually about, right, what's our strategy? How are we looking at next season? What are we looking at? We won't stop. Uh, it's, it's something which we drive standards all the time and we're challenging each other as coaches. Uh, we're very excited and this is something to come. Planning already beginning. Good thinking. I mean, step aside from the rugby and everything, like what you've created here at Gloucester Hartbury, over 9,000 people in today, I mean, that. It's a really special time for, for the club, but, but you spoke about it in the semi-final. It's the girls that have created that and made that that's happened. Yeah, you're right. But but also it's how amazing is this for the Allianz Premier 15 to see that spectacle, nine, ten thousand people. It's it's amazing. It's very truly special and it's amazing to see where one women's rugby is going. The talent out there today, the talent that's been in the Allianz Prem all season. Yes, the two teams there are in the final, but thank you to everyone, the opposition that we've played, the opposition, it's been special. Special being the big word today. Yes, definitely. I am so excited to see what you guys come up with next season, so I'm not quite sure how you better this apart from doing them back to back, but I do have to stop you just there because Nathan Middleton, we'd only stop you for one person, and Nathan Middleton is with Natasha Hunt. Thank you, guys. You can say Right? Thanks, Lauren. We're Thank here so with the Gloucester Harbury co-captain, Mo Hunt, Allianz Premier 15's champion. How's that sound? Yeah, pretty epic. Um, you caught me at a bad time. I was just in my um, family and granddad and that in the crowd, so probably just choked. Um, but no, it's amazing. Like This squad is something really special. I know we keep talking about it 
So hopefully you've seen that, like how together we've been the last few weeks. And I couldn't wish to do it with a better bunch of girls. Like honestly, I couldn't. Talk about today, your hometown club, in their hometown venue, a neutral venue for today, of course. But in front of the shed, in front of nine odd thousand, making that much noise, what was it like out there? It was unbelievable. Like genuinely, you always think like that you've got to the limit of what you're getting to um, in terms of your career, in terms of like how we're pushing the boundaries with women's sport. And today's just gone another level. Like for me, when we came out and I think Chief started chanting in the shed, um, I don't know, their mascot or something was walking down and they started chanting their thing and then you just saw, heard the Gloucester erupt. When we jogged in after warm up, like unbelievable. And then at moments in that game, it wasn't the prettiest. I said before, it's probably the worst game of 80 minutes I've had all season, but hopefully my chat made up for what I was doing on the pitch. Um, and it was just, it was just class. Like being out there with the girls, the effort, everyone, like it's just, oh, it's amazing. And look what it means. Like hopefully we've inspired the generations to come primary schools everyone's got behind us this year and um, oh, these last few weeks and it's just been so special. And in terms of the group I know you mentioned it the good vibes the good feeling you had a lot of new players come in your season probably started earlier than one obviously with World Cup but in terms of what you have done individually RPA player of the year and Allianz Premier 15's champion back in the England squad what does this mean to you? Oh it means everything like it's right up there with winning the World Cup with running out with the bar bars in front of 26,000 at Twickenham like to do it to win the Prem after the journey that a lot of us have been on like you've got girls in there that are on 60 100 caps like they've been here they've been here for so long and to do it with them and for most of them from the start is so special but to do it here like it was what dreams were made of genuinely was and I can't thank the marketing team and everyone that put that bid together back in the day like in September I think it got announced um, like honestly this is like lifetime goals in terms of this group obviously had a lot of new players last year is this the start of something I hope so. Like <laughs> when you're at the top, people come after you that little bit harder. I said it to the Bucks girls, obviously last season when they won. Um, that to back it up is even harder. But bring it on! Like every time that you get to that next level, you want to go that little bit further. So, yeah, fingers crossed we'll be able to to do the same next year. Go see the family. Congratulations, Mohan, Premier 15 champion. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to Nathan Middleton, getting all of the reaction from out in the middle of the field. And exactly what Mo had said there, we are pushing the boundaries of women's sport. And exactly what we did here today at the Allianz Premier 15's final. As the moon sets, the sun sets? No, the sun sets <laughs> on an incredible season. Kat, what are your main takeaways? Uh, that people care about women's rugby. It's a quality product. They put on performances like that. We're getting record um, attendances, like watching and everything, and they care and they should care. I think for me, I think just the level of investment and every team, I think, is pushing the boundaries. Everybody's trying to edge the game forward in a really positive light. And, you know, I don't think there's any club this season that hasn't tried to push those boundaries, and it's a great place to be in for the future. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone here at Allianz Premier 15s and the RFU. We have had one hell of a season and we have enjoyed bringing it to you every single step of the way. Fingers crossed this is not the end and we'll be seeing you right back here next season. But until then, a massive congratulations to Gloucester Harbury and we'll see you next year. And Gloucester Harbury back in the game. Third try. It's a chance here for Bristol Bears.